to another episode of Zero Chat. My name is Tyler, along with, and I'm here with my co-host Justin. How's it going, everyone? All right, we got a big cast today. Uh, first up, we have David. Hey, yeah. And Nick. I'm not actually here. Robin. Hey. And our guinea pig, Cilantro. Hi, folks. All right, so. This will be our, uh, the latest entry in our How to Train a Xenofan series. Um, Project Noah. So previously... Oh, sorry. Project Noah. Project Noah. Thank you. Project... You're welcome. Yeah, but, but this yeah. sound is fun. How d- but it, that makes it sound so serious. It, it's, it's a reference to, to the original name of the Xenogear series when it was still in development, so it's more appropriate. How to Train Your Dragon. I'm not a dragon. I'm a squid. <laughs> but it'd be cool. We've got over this. So previously, uh, we've uh, heard uh, Cilantro's experience with uh Zeno uh, titles in the past and their uh, reaction to the Zeno Saga anime, which should be posted by the time this is up. And today we're going to discuss Cilantro's journey through Zeno Gears. To be honest, folks, I didn't realize I was going to get a third episode. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I had no it. idea you were going to actually play through Xenogears. Hey, I said I was going to do it. <laughs> I, had no I did idea it. The PlayStation would still be in repairs. I know. And it's really oh, sad. Yeah, can, you, can you go through that that adventure you had to go through to actually play Xenogears? It, well, it started off very easy because it was I had a PlayStation and I had Xenogears. Well, you and also had Tales of Destiny. I also had Tales of Destiny, but that has nothing to do with my adventure in playing Xeno Gears. <laughs> it's not your I destiny. Mean, you, you, had a, you had Tales of Destiny one day, and then you had, oh, by the way, I don't want to read the disc today. And then, yeah, it wasn't I don't want to read the disc. It was I don't want to, the tray didn't want to stay closed. So I was like, okay, I guess I'll go get this repaired. It's still getting repaired. I don't know why it's taking so damn long. That's my Other fault. than COVID. It's my favorite uh, PlayStation so I just got, game. Yeah, COVID uh, for the, the PS2. Yeah. Um, so I got frustrated and just bought another used PlayStation. And uh, there we go. That, that was the exciting adventure. Awesome. You know, I didn't realize was it, was that. Was it worth it, Cilantro? <laughs> oh, you didn't realize I just gave up and bought a new one? No, I didn't. I thought you actually got it repaired finally. No, it's still it's still in shop. I just kind of figured, all right, worst right. case, I have two PlayStations was, at some point in the like, future. Was it like a... What model did you get, by any chance? Was it the it's still, it, big yeah, PS2? It, both of them are PlayStation 2 fats. Okay. Was it like a bad sign when you walked into the repair shop and they were beating it with a hammer? <laughs> I didn't walk in. I sent them an email. They didn't respond. <laughs> I sent them another email. They didn't respond. I called them, and then they're like, yeah, we don't have a part right now. And I'm like, okay. Jeez. Can you get the part? We don't know when we'll get the part because COVID. Okay. I'm going to get another one then. I figure once we hit the two-month mark, I'll call again and be like, can I please have my PlayStation back at this point, and I'll just give it to a different repair shop? Yeah, we got your PlayStation oh. right here, buddy. But you gotta pay up to get That's it back. Insane. Okay, hey, demand money. a refund. I'm not gonna demand a refund. They like part of the, the anyway. I'm not gonna. It's fine. It's fine. I have a PlayStation. Yep. And I have Tales of Destiny, which I don't know why that was relevant to the story, but there it is. It's because you what? took the Zeno disc out and. The, oh, PlayStation like the, the PlayStation was like, no, so you're going to be playing Xeno. If you're going to be playing Tales of Destiny, I'm not going to cooperate. You say that as so, like, then we put Xeno and it's like, okay, I'll work again. Like, no, <laughs> it just... <laughs> <laughs> no. The true story is that Xeno Gears has been in bot PlayStation since, like, 20 years ago. I mean, that's close enough to true. <laughs> that sounds like a good tale of destiny to me. <laughs> And that's the true meaning of Christmas. It's not even December! How is it not December? 
Yeah, when it's literally the it's, second. It's the it was, second. It was day. literally December yesterday. <laughs> Way to date this podcast. <laughs> I'm sorry, I meant to say, oh, yeah. right, right, oh, wait to Christmas. Oh. The, the... It's not Christmas <laughs> season yet. We have three more weeks. Have you been. Granted, this episode will probably be out after our holiday episode, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll come out like Valentine's Day. Yeah. <laughs> some, some of us have been working retail, and for us, it has been fucking Christmas since July. Yeah, that's wrong. Well, you're also that's wrong for ethical reasons. That's also that that in a lot of stores that's at least after Halloween, but in an arts like an arts and craft store that is exactly in July or all year mm-hmm. round in some cases. Yep. Anyway, oh. that was the exciting journey of the PlayStation. PlayStation, if you're listening to this now, I miss you. Come home. <laughs> also, that's homework like down, a... but it's a PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Slauncher, would you say that Journey was worth it for Zeno Gears? Honestly, that silence is telling. <laughs> um. So, um, I I have been um. <laughs> banging my head against the keyboard for probably the past four days attempting to write the the notes just to bang out the timeline because holy shit, this is a long-ass game. Oh good, you liked it. It was a long-ass game and I could barely tell what the fuck anything was doing. Like, okay, we're gonna do this plot point, then this plot point. Info dump! Everything that happened in the past! Wait a second, now I have to reorganize my entire understanding of everything that just happened. And then we had the giga pause right there, and then I'm like, how does how do I play this game again? Why doesn't the circle button do anything? Oh wait, that's 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 because this isn't a Nintendo. This is a this is a Sony product. So B so the B button is what does all the stuff. Yeah, you know that feeling when the select button gets backwards and you have to switch your brain over every day. All the mu- yeah. I had to do that in the switch from Xenogears to another game I was playing called Tales of Destiny. The fuck is wrong <laughs> with these people? Well, the, the select button just kind of, like, the main button is is just different for both games. I know, I know, I know. Whoever way back when who decided that the circle button shouldn't be the select button, I hate you right now. That's been a long time discourse with PlayStation games because the Japanese typically do circle as confirm mm-hmm. but when they brought it over to the states they switched it to X because they figured well for for us westerners hitting the X button is more natural because that's where your thumb rests but uh yeah it's it's really weird especially and, and that's still like an issue even today on like the PS4 if i get like it, the Japanese version of a game Circle will be confirmed, but if I play like the English version of it, X will be confirmed. Well, um, while I forgot all of the death blows, I actually did find a chart with all of the death blows in Japanese, and every time you would end it in X, there was actually a circle. Yep. That's why yeah. they, had to, they had to standardize our hands. Which I'm pretty sure that's even... Like, they're not even... Right. I don't know. I could never learn death blows, to be quite honest. Oh, well, the death blow thing was pretty easy once I got the hang of it. It was just trying to remember what all the combinations were. I think I literally just scraped by in that game. How? It's not that hard. You just do I mean, something, and then had... you end in X. I mean, you also had me telling you what button combinations were next, because. If nah. Um. I mean, they finally figured that out. You just look up a guide and you you get them all. And I I learned them because I eventually memorized them. But you know, uh, I had them memorized for a bit, and then after the pause, I'm like, I can't remember jack shit. And then I'm like, wait a minute, why are you going Super Saiyan? Oh yeah. No crap. What was the other combination for the next element? I feel like after a while, you just kind of remember three or four of them. Mm-hmm. And then you just kind of 
use those as your go tos. Mm-hmm. But I guess like what can be kind of confusing is remembering all the names, especially if you're going to do the combos. Oh fuck the names! Why do you have to remember just... the names? Exactly, every single character has different names for the same things. And then when you get Satan's sword, they change again. And then when you put everybody in their gears, they change again. Oh, when you put them everybody in the gears, they also have like completely different ones. So a lot of the yeah. time, I just remembered. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's the ice one. That's the fire one. That's the this one. That's the one where they jump up the air and do the kick like Michelangelo. I kind of just mostly went by numbers. That works like, too. I could not remember which ones were which element. Not for the life of me. <laughs> Alright. Well, uh, do you want to talk about what you have learned about this game since your predictions about the game? Yeah, I actually did go back and re-listen to the old podcast episode what was it 29 yeah um okay let's go through um everything that i may have said one i actually did a game with a three-dimensional camera yay Yay. you did it i did one (laughs) um item number two the the fake Chineseness that is the village of Lahan that is compared to everything else, which is some Western mishmash. Like, yes, but even with context, it just feels weird and out of context that we have this one teeny little Chinese village in the woods, and then everything else is like various degrees of cyberpunk. I mean, that's a s- you're in a square RPG. It seems really inconsistent, even for the number of Square RPGs I have gone through. Yeah, but what about the ones you haven't gone through? I mean, that's pretty I'm... consistent. All right, I'll <laughs> give you that. <laughs> There's a lot of old desert towns at the start, too, so... Um, we have a, basically a kung fu anime protagonist. Yes, because this is a game that wanted to be a fighting game, but it wound up being a turn-based RPG game instead, with a fighting minigame. I get it. I see you really like fighting games. I do not like <laughs> fighting games. What they made me do in Keith's Love was really horrible. It made me dizzy. It was one of the few times where I'm like, bot, just take over. I can't do this. I'm gonna put my head down. <laughs> you disrespect the arena fighter. I'm just kidding. That's fine. <laughs> no, it's just like, okay, so, um, the way that the camera works is different in that one particular mini game. It's such that it just threw everything off for me. That camera is weird in that it's like, it's like yeah, a rubber band it... camera. <laughs> well, yeah. It's got that um it's constantly rotating. It's kind of like uh, another game at the time called Virtual Lawn, mm-hmm. which was yeah. a one-on-one robot fighting game. So, I kind of wonder if that's kind of where they took inspiration from when they're making mm-hmm. it. Not justifying it, just kind of explaining where I think they may have been coming from with Still, it. Still, I did not like that one particular part. I'm honestly surprised as it, it was as smooth as it was. <laughs> I expected worse. Well, I think that's... I don't really like it. That's it runs out. a different frame well, rate than the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, isn't there even a frame rate? Yeah, there's a yeah, frame there. Yeah, there is. <laughs> yeah, like, that minigame... I, I mean, we've spoke about this in a minigame episode, but... It's weird how much extra work was put into that minigame, because if you go back there, there's like a training mode, there's a two-player versus mode, there's all sorts of unlockable characters for it, too. I think there are just two, but yeah. No, no, there's a whole... There's a bunch of characters you can play in it. But there are only like two that are special unlocks. Oh, okay, Uh, okay. I see what you're saying, yeah. But yeah, I remember there's a ton of characters. It's like you can scroll through (laughs) it later and you've got every robot in the game. (laughs) You don't yeah. because you don't get well tall aid. I can't and remember. And I think they all have like unique move lists too. It's it's nuts how much work was put into it. There's even frame data, which is crazy. Yeah, they really wanted that thing to be in there, but like <laughs> I really wish they didn't make it mandatory. <sighs> Listen, they put a lot of work into that. They need you to play that part. I get it. <laughs> yeah. But ouch, my brain. I get where you're coming from, though, because I hate I hate a bunch of forced 
segments in games. Well, like, okay, if it had the consistent camera angle, maybe I wouldn't have been so, like, what the fuck is going on here? Because, like, the, you know, the normal camera, the axis of pivot is basically where you're sitting on your couch. But, like, in this particular game, the world moves around your robot. So, like, the camera is different than, like, wait, where is everything? That camera is, like, it's kind of like a weird in-between point between your robot and the enemy robot, isn't it? No, the axis of a pivot is actually uh, your character itself. Oh, that's right. I was thinking that that was, though, for some reason I was remembering that camera as, like, always trying to fit both robots in the screen as much as possible. Yeah, it does, because if you run away from each other, then your robots just get tiny. That's right, yeah. Okay, so I did never figure out where on Earth I was in the plane of the battlefield, so... And also, turning that thing just made me really, really dizzy. That's why I was your anti-frustration feature. I am glad and very grateful for my anti-frustration feature. Also for Babel Tower. Which we're not up to on this list yet. No, that is way further down in the notes. <laughs> we'll get back to that. That was definitely right, the trippiest. what other predictions did you have? Satan is a bastard. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, agree. Next. Satan is an antagonist. <laughs> Disagree. Uh, I wrote debatable yeah. here. <laughs> I did not actually get a chance to listen to you guys' Satan episode, so um, I have no idea what you said there. I think it's safe for Squid. At this point, yeah, but uh, by the time I listened to it, we were already going to have finished with with this recording. Yeah, I can speak I would tonight. hope so. I hope we don't have to take a pause in this recording so you can listen to an entire episode. <laughs> I am not going to do that. I am not going to force you guys to do that either. Well, this is a really awkward hour. Uh, <laughs> I should have done that beforehand, but then I was writing all these goddamn notes. It's all good. We'll just record so you listening good. to the episode. <laughs> Meta. <Your> reactions. <laughs> oh my god. Like, so do you think he's an antagonist? I guess is the real point. I mean, he's a sleeper agent. He's not a sleeper agent at all. Uh, for like the first half of the game, he basically is. Well, he's not... I don't know that I would use the term sleeper agent. I know what you're talking about, I just don't know that I do that Okay, term. uh, what would you prefer? Oh. Double agent? Triple agent? Yeah, yeah. yeah double. Oh, no. Agent right. twice removed? <laughs> 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 Agent's second cousin, you know. I mean, well, could you uh, say he's not an antagonist in the sense that he's not actually working against you in a way? He has his own agenda, which is separate from that of the Solaris agenda, which. Yeah. Well, is technically with you, it's also against you, so it's like, uh. Shrug emoji. Yeah. What is his agenda? Shady Let's motives. Do that. Uh, so what is the motives of everybody? Um, I don't know. What's an ethics committee? Okay, but but what, regardless of the ethics, what were, were his, his motives? Um, what was he trying to do? Honestly, that is a little bit unclear sometimes. Like, definitely it's keep an eye on Faye. Mm-hmm. Um... And um, whether or not Faye is cooperative with the overall grand scheme of Solara seems to be, like, secondary. But, like, mostly making sure that Faye doesn't die. Okay. Yeah, I always saw him as, like, protecting Faye, but protecting Faye from himself. (laughs) Yeah, he was basically trying to make sure Faye wasn't a threat to Solaris, but also he was trying to determine, hey, should Solaris kind of back the fuck off? I am very surprised after 10, that- after 10,000 years was like, maybe we should back the fuck off. I'm honestly surprised that he, of all people, is the one chosen for this particular quest. I love that part where they get to Solaris and he's like, what's up guys, I'm back, look at what I got, yep, that's right. <laughs> Look, you know who this is, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like the part where Satan is a YouTuber. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh, it's just a, the having Faye, having control of Faye is just an ego thing for him. 
What's up, everybody? It's Hugo Richter 420. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what really that's something else that really bothered me because Hyuga and Rikudo are both they're both surnames, so like why does this guy have no personal name? He's just got two last names? No uh, first name? Future personal names will be deleted. It's part of being a double agent. What about people who have two first names? Like a first name and a last name that is a first name. Yeah, um, Surprisingly, we did not have representative Android Girl. We uh, had Nanobot Android. Girl, we had Cyborg Girl, see, but we didn't have an Android. Yeah, it's like, and I see you have Emeralda on a technicality, mm -hmm. but I don't even know if Emeralda really counts. It's weird because some of Emeralda's death blows potentially suggest that. I mean, she's a hive of nanomachines. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, she has uh, the like the leg drill. Mm hmm. And um, I, I think she could also turn like her hair into a hammer mm -hmm. and attack. She it was more like a maze, but self yeah. Into a hammer, but yeah. Dude, she can do a Sonic the Hedgehog ball. She can do that. Yeah, that's right. And there's like metal blades with that too. Her animations are so fun. They are fun. They they kind of remind me of Astro Boy, in a weird way. She hmm. was see that. definitely one of my stuff. permanent party members. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I, I remember she was really good, especially when she turned into the quote unquote adult form. She had that one death blow where she like teleports. I remember that was really strong. Yeah. I I liked that some of her moves reminded me of Kirby stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um, next prediction. The next uh, prediction was uh, the whole boob windows galore thing, which is false. Um, the aesthetic that these guys went for instead is equally kind of weird though it's like you know <sighs> seven of nine I guess is the easiest way to put it seven of nine what do you mean by that um like <sighs> um we've all watched enough Star Trek to know what seven looks like right she looks like a Barbie doll. Spoiler Wait. alert, no. Oh my I, gosh, I, David! <laughs> I was gonna say, I think there's probably a few here that have it. I'm, like, let's I'm pretend aware that of absolutely character. nobody has. Okay, we all know what a Barbie doll looks like, right? Yeah. No, what? Yeah. What is that? You know, what's a Barbie doll? Can you explain that to me? <laughs> okay, sure. We have a... Um, we have a chest cavity with two separate breasts that are completely divorced from each other and are acting as two separate entities. And then we have a piece of cloth that is extremely tightly wrapped around them such that you see the two items individually. And I'm like, well, first of all, that's completely anatomically inaccurate. And B, it's ubiquitous. Tomb Raider. Yeah. Huh. You know, yeah, old well, school. Oh, uh, yeah. oh, boob socks. Yes. Those, like, sweaters where they have, like, boob socks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Gears has some impossible clothes. They do, but like it also really bothered me that um everybody looked like Bat basically, and then uh on top of that, if you zoom out on Emeralda's sprite, I know it looks like she's like wearing rags, but the way that the black is positioned on her red crop top and on her skirt looks like she's wearing a bikini. And that disturbed me. I know she's two thousand some odd years old and a hive of nano machines, but like look like a small child. You she shouldn't be sexualized child, like I that. Was, well, I, I was just gonna wait. say that I never found that. I, I, yeah, I, I, I that's the first. I, I never saw. I never saw all that. the Emeralda fans are about to come after us now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Emeralda fans, but I did notice that, and then I said it on the podcast, and we can delete it. <laughs> no, that's fine. But it was just we can delete night. everything. <laughs> I, it's just sometimes just we're not gonna upload this episode. Disagree. It happened. <laughs> We'll I'm see, like, whenever I saw the audios, right? and then I'll just throw them away. Okay. All right. <laughs> the garbage. We can stop now. Uh, well, like, I did pull up a couple of examples in the notes, but unfortunately, we can't put that in the show notes. I actually... I the show YouTube notes. Video. can't put it in the show. You're going to force me to look at the sprite again, because my memory of the Emeralda sprite, especially, like, the, the kid version, is just where she's, like... It just wearing like this, uh, I don't know, like the scar. I, I think I remember the scarf most of all, but just yeah, a raggedy uh, well, long shirt. <laughs> it's a crop top. 
Is it? Fan art has really it's made Emeralda really a, wholesome. A shirt where it just kind of. Sorry, I was talking over you. Go oh. ahead. Uh, I was gonna say like fan artists have kind of made Emeralda really wholesome. I appreciate mostly. that. Yeah. I was gonna say that as her as a child form, it's you know an appropriately sized but torn up shirt, and then when she grows, the shirt doesn't grow with her. So yeah, I always it's thought a crop it's a top, yeah, that's... so it's not a crop top when she baby. It always looked yeah. like a tunic to me. Yeah, that's kind of what I was. I just thought it was a shirt that was ripped yeah. up. Dude, okay, so we can all agree she has the best scarf, though. I mean, yes, she, she has a great scarf. oh yeah, absolutely yes. wonderful and scarf. The... <laughs> And I like the hair too. I'm a sucker for that green oh, yeah. hair. Yeah. Same. Everyone's is a great character. She Everyone's is. This was great. I had her at my final party. If that counts for anything. Yay. Yeah. Well, I mean, she yeah. can transform. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, for the final, final battle, I actually decide, like, wait, I, I haven't done this yet. I haven't actually compared whether or not Satan or Emerald is going to go first because they're both speed demons. I have to know who goes first, but I ran out of time. And then I was already knee-deep in this dungeon, so I'm like, well, I guess I gotta do it now or never. And it turns out Emerald still goes first. But she does not get as many turns as Satan does. Yeah, it makes sense. And now we know. Now we know. <laughs> it's like a speed versus agility thing or something. And other predictions? Uh, Slash initial thoughts? Um, well, uh, the, the last of this is um, characters I couldn't quite place. Um, I completely fucked up with the Van Houten clan. Put them in the saga pile. I was wrong. Yes. Um... I got two out of three eye patch guys. I completely missed over a Sigurd, but I'm pretty sure that's because he just didn't show up in fan art very often. Like, yeah, people are too busy drawing Bart. Exactly. Well, I mean, draw his draw his brother, guys. That sounds Sometime. completely reasonable. I'm not saying it's unreasonable to draw Bart. I'm saying also draw his brother sometimes. Yeah, that's true. I agree with that. Not. It's not draw less Bart, it's draw more Sigurd. Also fair. You good. Um, Bart should have been the protagonist of this anime. I don't think Bart had enough of a, of a horse in this race. <laughs> <laughs> I, li- I um, like Bart, and I, I totally get where you're coming from, but... Yeah, like... yeah it's, I get you. He has the motivation... <laughs> But I guess that's why he's got to kind of help push Faye. Yeah. <laughs> he had a horse in a different race, and their races just happened to overlap at points. Yeah, but Faye was so reluctant. Faye like, was also three. But, like, he also had no clue what the heck he was going into, whereas Bart was like, yes, I'm an impulsive jerk, but I also have half an ounce of kindness. Hey, would you like to help me take over my own castle? He he had all of that, like, vibrato. He had all of the motivation. He had all of the passion that Faye was lacking for probably the first, what was it, four major areas. Like, up until we got to Shavat, when we finally started unlocking all of the backstory, Faye just seemed like, kind of like a wet blanket. Yeah, but he was supposed to. Oh yeah, this was this was like the era of that kind of protagonist in a robot <laughs> show, too. especially. Just make Bart but the Bart had Bart missile. Exactly, that was also pretty cool. And other characters you weren't sure about. Um. Well, I knew Graf was a horrible person. I didn't realize he was a horrible person in the first game. When did you think he was going to be a horrible person? Honestly, I wasn't quite sure which game he was going to go in. Oh, okay. I knew he was a horrible person as soon as I saw the cape. 
saw the cape and I was just like, this guy is a bad dude. Oh, he gets much worse than Saga. I'm kidding. <laughs> Saga, Groff just, oh, what the you- shit Groff does. I like, okay, to be fair, if somebody said, oh, this actually um, appears somewhere in, like, one of the Xenoblade games, you know what? I would buy it. Like, come God, on. I wish. I would buy that in a heartbeat. <laughs> Not that there isn't any Xenoblade game. Would, in Xenoblade 2. That would be yeah, so yeah, good. Is- but like, okay, for Blade and Blade Two, it's actually is mostly focused on people with swords, right? Uh, There's no melee. Uh, there, there is melee in Blade Two. Torna. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It, and other. Sorry. If a uh, cross has melee, I'm not surprised. Honestly, if if I had to like close my eyes and pick a game, I would probably pick Cross. Is where Graph would go. I could see that. Yeah, okay. but I, mean, but I think I'd slip in there and no one would notice. I think I could actually see him a little more in two, though, just because of the weird, like, oh, it's a bunch of er- otherworldly stuff in here, but you'll see. I guess, yeah. Grop could have totally been a blade. Yeah, I think so. For sure. You know, if they could get away with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they own the property rights, right? No. Nope. They could do it. <laughs> No, oh, they don't. They absolutely don't. It's in Square Enix jail. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, they they put him in straight, dude, to get jail. Yeah. No. Unfortunately. And your last uh, character you weren't sure about? Uh, the Gazelle Board of Whack Jobs. Yeah, you found out where they're from. Yes, and they still don't make any sense, even with context. Nope. Now I know okay. you. You might have missed uh, one of your notes about a certain choo-choo. <laughs> no! No, I hate choo-choo. No, we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to <laughs> talk about choo-choo. We discussed her before okay. we started recording. I'm like, I hate choo-choo. Hey, you okay. said it. That's the note. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did it. You did it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Choo-Choo tries to have a romantic arc with the protagonist, and it falls on its face so badly. Especially because they're siblings. Yeah, that just makes it worse. Yeah. To be fair, I don't think either of them is able to put together the fact that they are siblings. Yeah, even though, like, you... Wait, actually... Yeah, you can go in there and read that as Faye. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, for, for those of you all not in the know, uh, there there is lore that says that wise men just kind of abducted a choo-choo, and that choo-choo is your choo-choo. They so Wise just... Man... Hmm? They should have just left choo-choo in the choo-choo room! But he didn't... He just took it with him? He just... He just... It's not... I think he... It's like he saved the choo-choo from experimentation, and then he's just like, I should just go live with the choo-choos, you guys. I but thought then he that doesn't have... happen. <laughs> when he could have saved his own I thought... stuff, bro. I thought he just covered Choo Choo's eyes and saved it from the experience of watching giant Choo Choo orgy or something. <laughs> he got it out of the room and like, I guess you're stuck with me now. He, he saves the Choo Choo from experimentation, but then like, there's a note where it's like, I just want to live a peaceful existence amongst the Choo Choo. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? You have um, a child and a wife at home, and you're just going to go <laughs> abscond with the Choo Choo. Let's... Well, he doesn't at that point, because that's a year past, so he oh, ha- he left a child in Lahan two years ago, and then was like, now I will have a hamster. I'm just gonna be hamster man, that's my <laughs> new thing. <laughs> so, here's what bothers me about that, is Choo Choo doesn't even have a wheel. Even the Nopon have wheels, sometimes, that they can run on like a hamster, but, you know. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I should probably <laughs> clarify that part. Yeah, it's like they don't have cars. They don't. They're not cyber. What are you saying? Nobody has cars in this world. Every every machine or every vehicle has to be bipedal. Why would you do that? It's so inefficient. I actually okay. really don't like Choo Choo very much. Either. Well, so. Too bad. This is a Choo Choo themed podcast. No, I object. I object. <laughs> I am not. No, I was thinking about the inefficiency. 
I was thinking about the inefficiency of gears, and then I thought about the inefficiency uh, inefficiency of a submarine that drives through the sand. I was like, yeah, one of them kind of outweighs the other. <laughs> okay, but the sand submarine is cool. It is. I agree. It makes Bart a man of the sea, even if the sand. sea is silicon. Sand well, sea. I, I mean, he does eventually become a, the ma- a man of the sand, sea, and air. And so I, let's go back to Choo Choo. No, we're going to go back no, to the Captain Walrus. <laughs> I see what you're doing. You're making this Rest interesting. In I like it. Keep on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, Hans and Franz are the best characters. Would you like to hear some hot sounds that I've recorded? Exactly. Who else is going to offer you some hot sounds? Nobody. Who else is a dolphin? Nobody does. Nobody uh, else is like, I got the sound library you want in. I wish I could walk up to a street f- vendor that offered me hot sounds and I'd be like, how much? I'll pay whatever you want. <laughs> I, I will say, if a street vendor just kind of said hot sounds that I have recorded, I'd be like, am I going to get arrested if I listen to these? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got your hot sounds here. Freshly recorded. Yeah, like, if it just said hot sounds, I'd be like, oh, you're selling bootleg CDs. No problem. Hot sounds that I have recorded, now I feel like I'm going to get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> You're my have to cut out farts. some of my laughing here. My armpit no. fart symphony. <laughs> 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 well, at least that won't be illegal. Anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is illegal in uh, Malaysia. <laughs> There's a guy Anyways. in the subway playing the melodica, and I gave him money because I try to tip buskers because I'm that kind of person. And then he was like, by the way, what is this song called? I'm like, you don't, you don't know what song you're playing? <laughs> That's no, um, All Star by Smash Monica. Mouth? Um. <laughs> anyway. Anyways, let's let's get back on topic. So, um, alright. So, after playing Xenogears, do you have any grasp of the story? Or what do you think about it? Um... Oh my gosh, I told you guys I spent how many days banging my head against the keyboard asking myself what the fuck was the plot? Um, I attempted to write a timeline. It turned into four pages on Google Docs. Um, the thing that really, like, made my brain hurt was trying to piece together everything that happened before we get to the opening. Like... So if I have this in the correct order, and feel free to correct me at any point. Um, so Earth, some weird-ass planet back over that away in space, um, decided to make a planet killer by trapping some Lovecraftian horror, which apparently looks like a cute redhead, in a battery for a terraformer. Also Christianity, because why not? Um, it was too effective. Um, it was over level 9,000, of course. Um, <laughs> so they put it on a transport ship to um, shift it elsewhere because they didn't want to deal with it. Um, the alien in the machine took over the transport vessel the vessel, and um, crashed on the nearest viable planet, which apparently was already viable anyway. Uh, the alien broke out, and um, between populating some other things that were already ex- that already existed into uh, Cain in the ministry and then maybe cloning itself which became most of the women and then procreating with all of the males that she just created we uh, populate this entire planet of we don't actually know what the planet is called what is the name of the planet in Xenogears they don't tell us do they planet it's called it's Mira. Called Mira. Oh, no, wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Pretty sure it has a name, but I forgot. Is it in Perfect Works somewhere? What? Uh, if it's somewhere, it's going to be in Perfect Works. I thought yeah. that I knew it, and then I was like, oh wait, no, that was from another game. <laughs> oh, I guess. Don't worry, our lovely listeners will let us know in the comments. <laughs> Please and thank you, listeners. 
It's apparently unnamed. Do a quick Google search. Thank you, Google Sensei. What I was going to say was that, like, the planet, while it had life on it, it didn't have the right life. And also, so, like, the terraformer machine was just like, I gotta fix this. Well, the terraformer machine. that it was, like, too effective. It was that they, you know, you don't terraform the planet you're already on. You're already there. It's good. Yeah, um, but, like, the terraforming machine uh, broke and it needed spare parts, so it created humans to make spare parts. It did do that. I'm just saying, like, why they were, they were taking it into space. It wasn't, oh, no, this is dangerous. It's You don't use your terraformer thing where it's fine. You don't, we wouldn't terraform Earth. It's already terraformed. I felt that that was kind of what they were doing, but okay, if that's how you want to interpret it, fine by me, I guess. I just played through this game and my brain hurts. Uh, where did I put my timeline again? Um, okay, so then that whole... Th so, um, after we populated the Earth in the uh, prequel, um, then we have the whole Zeboim civilization where they had some other war and then they were probably cloning themselves into um, their own extinction because there were so many people with um, the inability to reproduce. So then they made Emeralda. Then they decided to put her in a test tube somewhere and um, Zeboim disappeared. Um, meanwhile, the Gazel Ministry decided to create Solaris. They then decided to orchestrate the Ethos as uh, the Shadow Government, um, and incited the war on the Ignis continent because why not? What is an ethics committee? Um, then we have the Nissan Rebellion, where Sophia is, um, as somebody else um, so eloquently put, War Jesus. Um, Lacan is also a wet blanket like Faye. He's poorly indecisive until people back him into a corner, and that corner is, unfortunately, Sophia decides to martyr herself. And his immortal rage at himself, mostly, uh, becomes the spirit of Groff, and Groff basically becomes Man Miang. Meanwhile, on the other side, we have Krellian, who... Again, what is an ethics committee anyways, decides to go his own separate way and then take his his own self-inflicted rage and um, put it into bioengineering, where he is going to then kill himself and everybody else with him by resurrecting God, the machine. Do you remember why Krellian was so upset? He's an incel. Okay. I Glad didn't want to say that. that. <laughs> I did not want to say uh, that on air, but now you made me say that on air. I didn't make you say shit. Krillian is the scientist who's like, I'm going to go where they wouldn't dare go because I can't. Again, what is an ethics committee? The unethical scientist. No science, science in here is ethical. <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, um, Khan is a terrible deep. dad. Okay. Um, Karen is a terrible mom because she gets possessed by Miang, who is extremely impatient. And um, is that on her? <laughs> yeah, like Miang, you're how many million year old um, eldritch being? You, oh, I didn't mean that. <laughs> I you, didn't you understand mean it on Miang. that um, one single human takes about two decades to become mature enough to do what you want it to, and you're kind of rushing it. So they uh, psychologically traumatized a baby. Yeah. Um, in a manner that makes absolutely no sense. Like, okay, um, you're from Shavat, right? What are you doing on the ground? There's no trees in Shavat with the same level of greenery that it looks like you are in in this little mountain village. How did you get to and from Solaris so quickly without anybody noticing? So many times. Least of all your husband. Now my brain hurts. I mean, when you're that <laughs> old, when you're that old, you've got to know a lot of shit that normal people wouldn't know. So we're just going to go with that. All right. So she can um, teleport. Awesome. Yeah. 
I mean, she sort of can if you want to call body swapping teleporting. Uh, that's this not really what true. I meant. What was that? Uh, like, it's it... one thing to body swap yourself. It's uh, something else to body swap yourself and then bring a small child with you. You just hold on to the child real, real tight. Is that thing that, like, um... Oh, wait, uh, Groth did that, but I think that was just cloaking devices now that I think about it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Groth can be invisible. Yeah. He can be a ghost. Yep. Mm -hmm. After we psychologically break Faye, um, then he accidentally winds up killing one of his parents, or they wind up dying because shenanigans, etc., and yet more shenanigans, and then I believe that Groff as Khan made Faye as it destroyed Dominia's hometown, and um, that's what I believe that he's painting when we finally get to the intro. So Faye's painting the destruction of Elru? I think that's what he's painting. I just figured it was abstract nonsense, because that seemed to be what all of his paintings were. It does look like a firestorm, so... Yeah. Definitely the only thing I that. cannot place is why Satan is on the ground screaming. What? Like that Man? very in that very beginning? first scene right before you zoom uh, out and it becomes the painting. Faye, you're gonna destroy the village. Yeah. I was I was figuring if you were just yelling at Faye, yeah, just like listen, snap out of it. I think you got the beginning a little jumbled. Okay, well the, then again it was back in September. That was what, four months ago? Yeah. Forgive me a little. No problem. No, it's okay. And uh, from there we get the rest of the story. I'm not going to even attempt to summarize this. It's four pages. Um, that's fine. That, that's fine. Like I said, it was as much or as little as you wanted to say. Yeah, that was that was the, the sequence that was puzzling me the most. But nobody seems to have objected, really. So I guess I'm right? About... I think there's... Uh, I mean, I think that there's a few things that could be taken one of a few ways, but I, I feel like, you know, there's a good amount of that that was probably pretty much right. Okay, I get partial credit. Yeah, I was like... I, I think everybody just gets partial credit for Not this. to, like... I'm not gonna, like, nitpick each one and say, oh, that yeah, that was right, that wasn't right. I think you were mostly on. There. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's a couple of things, like how like Deus was a was a thing, like Deus was like an AI weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. De Deus is the terraformer thing. So and I'd put it also like it wasn't mentioned by name. And also Abel is the contact, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is I'm just like reaching in my memory banks for this game. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's been I think a the while. problem here is that it was since this was very much meant to be a like what do you remember of the story, it of course is and now we're like asking other people, what do you remember of the story? Now that you've heard what right. somebody else remembers of the story. So For more, listen to Retrograde Amnesia. They have a really well, comprehensive replay. Yeah. It's just such a dense sequence of events in that game oh, that it's Yeah. yeah it, it's not like I it's like I'm not a human encyclopedia for the game. There are things I actually have to look up every now and then kind of thing. And no, no. oh yeah, sorry about that, bot. I wasn't I wasn't meaning to summon you. I was just you know. <laughs> you said you were encyclopedia for the game, and I showed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, don't worry. We're not we're not going to expend your energy. <laughs> not all of it. I guess this is a good place to transition to. Um, yeah. Okay. You wanted to try the uh, whole soulbound lovers trope. You didn't do it well. Yeah. 
Honestly, kind of sad when that starts feeling like the one of the major, like one of the biggest focuses later. But I, like, okay, I don't mind that you're attempting to do this trope. What really bothers me is that you're attempting to do this trope, but with an Oedipus complex. Yeah, that part was a little. A lot of the romances are just like one step away from okay. Like this would have been fine, but then you did this, and now it's weird. I mean, with all the different ideas like thrown in here, it would be kind of hard not to make some of this stuff weird, to be honest. That's fair, but it does kind of just make me think, what romances I, have Zeno done very I, well? Can you make Miang even like a concept in this game without making everything kind of an Oedipus complex? Uh, Miang's like the one thing no, about... No. Like one of the things yeah. about the game that really kind of bothers me deeply. Into so a lot of this. Yeah, but like, Faye's not in love with Miang. He's in love with Ellie, but Ellie exists basically specifically to be exactly the sort of mother Faye would want, and that's kind of fucking weird. Yeah, yeah, it is. yeah. <laughs> I'm like I, I everyone don't think the just issue like is so yeah. much. Yep, this is weird. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think the issue is so much like, oh, Miang was Karen and then Miang was Ellie. Like, okay, so they both have the same brain parasite. Fine. I it's mean, it's really just the part where Ellie exists to be mom and Faye's like, I want to hit that. Like, no, Faye. And he no, does Faye, no. successfully. That's what really gets me. Why? How did they allow that to happen? Well, because of um, all the trauma. <laughs> Mutual uh, trauma does not people together. Trauma should be... not climax in a sex scene, especially with these teeny hey. little models. <laughs> it should Sorry, not have was... happened. That was just well wrong. Punched. There's a. L- I feel like there's a lot more common. There's a lot of than... stuff that's wrong in this game. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's actually pretty common in fiction. Unfortunately, I know yeah. it's a bad trope, but it's everywhere. It's not even- but well, also, the the other part about this is that it is a game. It was supposed to be sold. People were supposed to want to buy it. And this is a game with a sex scene. So that was real, real exciting. I, it's also, like, it's also easy to rare. I can't think of many other PS1 games with an on-screen sex scene. Yeah. Let alone JRPGs. I think I've read that Wild Arms 2 might have one, but... Other than that, I can't think of another. From that era, at least. I'm honestly surprised that this thing just didn't get the um, 18 plus rating. Tell me Everyone... somebody got handsy in a game called Wild Arms. It got rated T, which is shocking. It's shockingly yeah. low, but I'm pretty sure whoever did that but rating didn't get very far. <laughs> I also think it's because it wasn't really that mainstream of a game. It's one of those things where, like, if you're a niche game, you can get away with a lot of stuff. Like, put it to you this way. If Persona 3 was... Like, the Persona series was as popular as it is now, back when Persona 3 came out. Persona 3 either would have had to have been severely toned down. People would have been complaining about it like crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, I- I'm very shocked that Persona 3 got away with the things that it did. For those of you who play Persona 3, you know what I'm talking what about. What rating did that game get? Because 4 got M. It got, it got an M okay. rating, but still, like... Some of the imagery in Persona 3, like how you use an attack. Oh, yeah. For yeah, sure. the evokers. Kids pulling a gun to their head yeah. and shooting themselves. Like, if that game was, wasn't was as, like, underground as it was back then, I feel like that would have been a lot more controversial than it was. Hmm. And it's like with Gears, I feel like there's a lot of things in Gears that it kind of got away with because people just weren't really paying attention to it at the mm-hmm. time. At least over here. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's probably different in Japan, but. Um, well, while I'm on the um, romances bullet list, I have two last items. Um, Go right ahead. Yeah, Bart and Margie it should, oh. is not a marriage that I would have expected for the nuns to be advocating. Um, but, like, okay, I get that they made one silly pass at it when you first start in the Ave area, but, like, when you get to the end game. Uh, and you're on the Yggdrasil, and you go to Margie to change your party. Uh, I, you put Bart in your party, and then you go back to her, 
and say, I want to change my party members again, she actually comes out with the character-specific piece of dialogue for Bart where she actually is like, hey, um, after this is all t- um, over, you want to like get together? And he's extremely exacerbated by this whole thing. <laughs> and then she has to just hide behind a uh, just kidding to dispel the awkwardness. I mean, Bart is rightfully distressed in that situation. I do not blame him for his reaction. I would have had the same if I were him. But, like, the fact that they went to that length in the story kind of bothers me. It felt like, uh, in some ways, they were trying to set up that whole, oh, it's the royalty thing, like they actually did back in the day where they hooked, like, cousins and shit up with each other. Mm-hmm. But then, but then it's like kind of all over the place with it. <laughs> yeah. Are you if like I'm remembering? No, oh, sorry. Oh no, go ahead. Well, I'm might be wrong. I might have to cut this, but I thought for the 20th anniversary concert, Kanhiko Tanaka drew artwork of like Margie and Bart getting married. Which did they really? I'll have to double check that. I guess that's the episode art we're I gonna don't go think that with. Was for the concert, I think that was in Perfect Works. Oh, was it Perfect Works? Oh, okay. I think it's in Perfect oh, Works. The picture you're talking about. Oh, uh, okay. I just was like, "That's nice, not canonical." <laughs> <laughs> Glad Bot knows what he's talking about. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, I, I have Perfect Works. I don't even remember that picture. <laughs> I don't have Perfect Works. You should go talk to your brother and get it back from Brother Bot. I told you it seemed like such a nice thing. I feel bad when I have it because I know it's his. It's like I, I guess they were trying to write is like, oh, we gotta do, we gotta keep it in the family for the Fatima Jasper. I'm like, okay, (laughs) sure. I I guess if that's if that's your thing. The thing I am curious about is how that would have worked out with the apparent original plan of having Bart be a lady and a potential love interest for Faye, or when I say potential, I I probably just mean that it was like a bit of a will they won't they situation like he was the the Tifa to Ellie's heiress. Holy shit, Bart could have been like a lady that says cowabunga (laughs) He would have been a cool lady. Bart could have been the first Melia of the series He could have been but instead he was the first part. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just imagining him with wings now. (laughs) Lady, the Bart, female Bart comes up, smacks Faye in the back of the head. How's it going, handsome? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, but like, Bart becomes, Bart takes the throne immediately abdicates because that's what the prior king wants and then gets voted president. How does the Fatima Jasper actually relevant from then on? It isn't. I mean, they it's already got not. the robot. So then why does anybody care? Because, the, look, they already... They put so many votes on this ship. Um, they put so... Look, I, that metaphor went away the moment I started it. <laughs> the churches are uh, weird, okay? <laughs> the, the churches are weird. <laughs> And I gotta say, on that point earlier, you know, a a church organization is a pretty good front for a shadow government. Like, I could see that working. That that could work, but that's not what Bart wanted. No, no, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean related to this. I was just, it just got me thinking about it again. Well, then we had the shadow government trying to secede from the shadow government, and that was just weird. It made sense, but it was like, when you put it in words like that, I'm like, what the? F- Would you like to uh, put it in words that the game put it in? So, like Lutheran. <laughs> the ethos is going to secede from Solaris because they felt like Solaris's presence wasn't really doing much, and they were going to take things into their own hands instead because Solaris was just kind of like up in the clouds. I mean, were they wrong though? If they- Krellian weren't up there, nobody would do be doing shit. Yeah, you went to Solaris, you saw them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they turned everybody into Cantuna. <laughs> and then they had Cantuna cannibalism. That's still unforgivable, Satan. I can't believe you. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jesus Christ, Satan. Yeah, like, Satan is a horrible person. I like that part where Satan like throws <laughs> back a can like oh, behind his head. Oh, I'm really good, <laughs> Faye. <laughs> I wish he did that because with the <laughs> shitty graphics, everyone would have just been like, but he ate it, right? <laughs> they would have to make like a little graphic of particles going out behind his head and Faye just did not seeing Did he shoot seeing. himself in the head and not eat food? <laughs> I don't understand. How did he shoot himself in the head with a tuna can? <laughs> they would have had to have a part of their 20 minutes of anime devoted to Satan not eating food. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, two more points about Satan, because I did like him as a character because he was just so awful, but also because he was pragmatically one of the better characters. But, like, okay, I really, really wish that they gave him his sword a lot earlier than halfway through Dis 2. Hmm. Or what felt like halfway through Dis 2. It was symbolic. It didn't have to be symbolic, it gave him so much more attack power. Symbolism. But attack power. I could have used that, especially in that... Symbolism. Okay, the (laughs) the Kislev dungeon? I really wanted that attack power. Oh, me? Knowing how to fight with a sword fey? I'm just simple. I'm a humble doctor. What are you talking about? You're a war criminal on both sides. I don't know what it is about stories, but I'm just attracted to conniving jerkbags like Satan... They're interesting! Oh yeah, he's definitely interesting. I'm glad he was there. Yeah. Oh yeah, this would have been a whole lot a more boring if he weren't the bastard. <laughs> um, uh, but like, okay, um, last bullet point in the romances are whack in this game is, <laughs> um, what's his marriage with Yui? It's not really there. No, but if you read Perfect Works... <laughs> but I didn't. That's so much of this game. It's like, oh, they didn't explain it, but if you got Perfect Works, a- there's like a whole paragraph about um, it. Was a I think Yui beat him in a sword fight, and then he was just like, well, I'm gonna have to marry her. Like, she's better at me than swords. Um, she must be I, bride. I, and Gaspar was like, fuck off away from my granddaughter. Well, I... I- I did pull out the um, link to the Dark Id's review of Satan, and what it said in here is that um, after rising through a bajillion ranks in Yugend, he a- attacks Shavat, thinks Yui is kind of hot, and so he backs out and then goes to Gaspar and is like, hey, can I marry your daughter? She's really hot. I didn't destroy your town or anything. And that's kind of how they got there, but, like, other than that, their marriage is pretty much dead. Maybe Satan just thinks that people that are better than him at swords are really hot. I mean, I'm not gonna Turns say that's well. wrong. That's, yeah, that, that is a good way to pick uh, a, a partner. You just go, hey, hey, I'm pretty good at swords, but if you're better than me at swords... <laughs> Honestly, all I remember about Yui's personality... Wait, that's not her personality. I just remember that she she cooked things and she would had she could do swords. <laughs> yeah, she cooks things, she can do swords, she's probably a good mom. Oh shit, she's Pyra. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, is Pyra probably a good mom? Yeah, I think so. I think she could. Okay. Yeah, yeah, all right. So. All right, yeah, she's Pyra. Yeah. Um and there's one tiny bullet point which I will read here. It says that um Satan is secretly a spy for God Emperor of Mankind, Cain. Knows Faye's entire past and the fact that he's a walking WMD, but keeps that all to himself. Except his daughter Midori is psychic and knows all of this too, and was probably scared shitless every time her father invited Faye over to devour all the food in their house. You know, that's just what you do. I mean, well, if you're a growing teenage martial artist, yeah, I totally understand eating everything. But when you're a tiny five-year-old... um. You usually have some relationship with your parent unless they're abusive. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you're uh, also I mean, a JRPG protagonist, one of your inherent traits is just being a kleptomaniac, so. And I guess. Honestly, that was really what the game was missing the option to go to, to Satan's house and just take his food, <laughs> <laughs> take everything. <laughs> If Satan really wanted to keep an eye on this guy, he would have been like, hey, you can have my spare room. 
Instead of being you like, hey, let's leave you with the village also... chief who's down the mountain between us and a valley of uh, man-eating wolves. Oh, I mean, do you want to keep the nuclear warhead in your house? I don't. Hey, what are you doing in my closet again? Oh, it's it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello there. You can stay. <laughs> no, don't stab me with my own sword. But you leave my him closet in door. a village with how many freaking casualty potentials? But how many of them are you? <laughs> that part at the start where Satan's like, it doesn't matter if Dan dies. <laughs> the part of the game at the beginning where he's just like throwing Dan at the robot while simultaneously <laughs> saying, Faye, be careful! There's there so many innocent. <laughs> uh, well... The way that Dan's character arc went, like, yeah, you can throw Dan at the robot. <laughs> I hated Dan. I didn't like when he showed up. I didn't think he should have forgiven Faye. I think that whole last scene with him being like, yeah, Faye, I forgive you for getting the entire village killed. It just <laughs> seemed a little out of place, but you know what? It happened. Shrug. He doesn't. Dan Sorry. is weird because he's like written. Yeah, he's he like is. written to be hated. I don't understand. Yeah. That. I, I think I he was don't... drawn to be hated too. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like his yeah. whole yeah, existence. Who likes Dan? Yeah. I don't know. There's some Dan Dojinshi, so somebody fucking likes him. Oh god, that's, that's terrifying. Uh, why? I don't I've know. never seen an anime character that looked more like a Three Stooges character. <laughs> <than> <laughs> <laughs> well, he looks like Chucky. He does look like that too, yeah. Oh, don't tell me that, because now I'm going to be thinking about that every time I look at Dan. <laughs> I mean, at least Chucky never told me about his sister's bazongas. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me, you remember that wedding dress that you get from him in the tournament? Why, well, yes. <laughs> Yeah. I could have sworn that was going to be a gender-locked piece of armor. And then it nope. wasn't. Also, it does make you question what the hell like weddings are like in Lahan. Because it's a decent piece of armor. Yeah! Like... <laughs> Alice, what were you prepping for? War, clearly. Did they go fight bosses? <laughs> They're in a wedding. A Game of Thrones wedding? Yes. <laughs> So do you have any questions about the story? Uh, Slash game? Play? In, Gameplay? In no particular order. Um, does anybody actually understand how Billy's ether guns work? Ooh, ooh, I know this one. They are hooked. <laughs> they don't work. Next question. <gasps> what? Are you talking about on a gameplay level or just like in the... Like, lore-wise, how they work. Uh, I mean, like, in the gameplay level, because the um, explanation that Prim gave is pretty convoluted. Okay, so... It's they're bugged and they don't work. Yeah, okay, so I, they're supposed to have a... They're, each different type of shot is supposed to have a limited number of, like, bullets that you can use per thing. However, whenever I was playing, from what I could tell, it looked like you didn't actually... Like, it would refill the clip... Unless you used all the bullets in like a sitting or something like that, I don't know because I was confused about guns, that too. Sorry, I bought them all. I bought all three types of bullets one time and never had to replace them for the whole game. And I used Billy a lot, so I wasn't sure how it did the count. That was just my guess. Well, when you buy the bullets, it comes with a like a set amount, doesn't it? Or it comes with a hundred yeah. per clip. Yeah, mm. but. As much as I use Billy, I don't see me not having used 100 in the course of the rest of the game. I think I did run out once, but um, yeah. more importantly, it's like um, 
Well, if you use the triangle button or the X button, it does contribute to the count, but if you use the square button, it doesn't. So I think that's what's supposed to be the ether bullets. However, because there are two guns and only one button, I thought they were just regular old bullets with no specialties mapped to them. I did try changing them out a few times, but I didn't see any differences. Yeah, they're bugged, so changing them out does nothing. Uh, all it does is that the square is an ether attack, so if you're fighting something that, you know, eats ether, the square will heat will heal them. But in terms of, like, what element they are, you can't control that. It doesn't matter what you do, it's bugged, and it does not work. But uh, in terms of ammo count, the only guns that are supposed to have a limited number of ammo are the small gun and the big gun. He says specifically that the ether guns are magic special things and he makes the bullets out of magic Mm -hmm. and therefore they have infinite ammo because shut up they do makes sense so that is billy's guns next question (laughs) okay how on earth did Faye wind up with sophia's cross when groff had it and khan wasn't groff yet yep that's a good question next (laughs) <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, I'm talking about the. You're talking about the necklace thing, right? Yeah, yeah the necklace. Okay. Yeah, they got it from his mama. That's all I can come up with. Um, his yeah. mom stole a holy relic. Okay. You know, some things are better left to mystery. <laughs> um, um, it was actually a replica, which makes way more sense if we just assume that, like. Sophia's necklace got real, real popular, and then, you know, others were sold. So it wasn't literally Sophia's necklace, it was just a replication of it, because why wouldn't they replicate that? Of course, because there's always a gift shop. Yeah, I mean, so they replicated she got it at the, the Nissan gift shop. Made in Kislev. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they actually sell the Kislev. portrait? Like, was that actually up for sale recently? Oh, like yeah. in real life, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Square made life, it. Yes, <laughs> yes, they, they did. That was a thing you could buy. Three. Yeah, I remember it was ridiculously expensive. Yeah. Um, but to answer your question, I mean, um, this is just a theory, but um, a I know that I mean, Miang, you know, converted Groff to being evil and whatnot, so. I don't know if at some point Miang took the necklace and then was keeping it as Karen. I d- but, I like, know. Miang and Graf are both technically spirits, so they're not tangible, so you're gonna have to do a lot more work in order to get that necklace. Mm, I don't know I about that. I would just say that I don't... I don't I mean, think they they're not tangible, tangible. But I don't think that she can control what she has when she body hops. Oh, uh, okay, that's what you mean. So I think it's just, it's a replica necklace. Oh, and okay, I see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah, it was made in Keyslift by prisoners. I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, do you not like the prison system in Keyslift? No, we already talked about battling. No, I don't, Pretty I don't like the, the idea that it's a plastic for... replica made in Keyslift. Because everybody else, everybody else is talking about it like it's the genuine item. Well, Obviously, it just you fell out of faction, fashion to have this. Let us know. There's no rule that says the fate can't be as good as the original. That part <laughs> in the game where Indiana Jones comes in is like, it belongs in a museum! <laughs> it's like, that was a reference, and if you understood it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Moving onward. Um, so... We had that one fight where Ellie was completely drugged, and they talk right. about all those after effects of Drive, and they even give us a cute little cut scene where she winds up, what, murdering a whole bunch of people because she's high. And then... Cute little cut scene. After the cute little cut scene and I whoop her ass, which unfortunately took two tries because um, explosion damage killed me at the very last second, the first time. That was miserable. Mm-hmm. Um, then... Drive just because this random item that you pick up sometimes and it gives you a permanent stat boost. But they did nothing with it, story-wise. Is there anything in Perfect Works that elaborates on Drive? I will say that it's actually that Ellie had a notably bad reaction to Drive. It seems that 
the way that they address that most people don't have Ellie's sort of like flip out moment with Drive. Ellie was special. It then even because so, they do say specifically it's just Ellie a really bad side drive. effect. But, yeah, but then like you would want to put that particular point into the game. So like if I gave her a tablet of Drive, it should have done something ridiculous with her stats. But no, it just went up by one point, like everybody yeah. else. I mean, it is a missed opportunity, but I don't know that I would call it anything other than gameplay story segregation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Can't believe they condone the use of drive. I know, right? Um, I disagree. I think you should absolutely drug up Choo Choo so she's your best healer for Gears. (laughs) So so many drugs (laughs) in that hamster. (laughs) (laughs) Cracked out hamster. (laughs) Okay, um, so, um, there's, there's an item that showed up probably maybe around the 30, maybe 40 hour mark called the B-Circuit in the shop. The description on the B-Circuit is, uh, basically it's good for snow and, uh, snowy terrain, so I thought there was going to be a snow dungeon, or maybe just, like, a field area where there's a lot of snow at some point, which eventually they did fulfill but it was so last minute that i asked myself why has this been in the game for so long we just get the snow hideout at the end and at that point i'm like why am i even bothering hanging out here i'm just gonna go straight to deus from here i think there are just a few things that are kind of left over in the game from when their ideas were bigger Mm -hmm. was that part of the cut areas it's been a while since i looked at those uh the snow hive down? Yeah. Or, no, like, was there any plans to, no, like, make that any bigger? Field. There might have been plans to make it bigger, that I don't know for certain. Uh, but I'm just thinking, in general, it was probably a, oh, we're gonna have a snow level, let's put this item in, and then they right. never made the snow and level. They, they just never ended up doing it at the end of the day. Yeah. Even so, we- I would not have expected it to have shown up as early as it did. It Not knowing enough about, you know game making it might have just been a hey while we're making all this other thing that causes this effect it's easy enough to make this thing that causes this effect because they have other environmental circuits that you you do go into the environment so it might have just been hey while we're making the desert circuit and the underwater circuit let's make the snow circuit exactly it's possible that and then just didn't have the area Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's possible that they had made the map relatively early on and they had included it there, but unfortunately weren't able to fully flesh it out. Mm-hmm. Of course, this is all speculation, guys, so, you know, I'm not stating any of this as fact. That's right, yeah. Pure will get you. D- yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Pure oh, will be me. outside of my house oh, screaming okay, at okay. me. It doesn't matter, the game sucks. <gasps> we won't it does suck. It. Um, when are we going to get that uh, reenactment of the entirety of Zeno Gears with Sock Puppets? Uh, well, Laundry Day is tomorrow, and that is <laughs> when I will be close to a dollar store and can buy several packs of socks and deal with the judgment of the guy at the <laughs> counter who thinks I have the world's stinkiest feet. <laughs> Wait, buying more socks makes people think you have stinky feet? If I buy too many socks, they will think I have the stinkiest of feet. Well, how many socks would be too many socks? I don't... I mean, how many cast of Xeno Gears? That's a great question. How many cast of Xeno Gears? Just so. tell them you have a pet octopus. <laughs> <laughs> I would That's love it really if you bought all those socks, and then, like, the guy, like, the clerk, just happens to be, like, a sock aficionado, and just <laughs> giving you tips on which ones about. I was like, oh, you're buying these socks today? Oh, no, well, no. I mean, it's brand. a dollar store. Brand. Yeah. <laughs> It would also be funny if he, like, saw how many socks I was buying and then threw in a free, you know, car air freshener. <laughs> like, here you go, you kiddo. Need, like, go for your stinky feet that keep need destroying you can, your socks. Need all you can get. Oh, these socks are for plebeians. You need this brand. I think any socks you get right. at the dollar store are for plebes. So socks aside, what's your next question, Solancho? Um, so, um... Save cubes are not cubes. Nope. Why? Because (laughs) you just wanted to call them that. (laughs) Because a cube is a six-dimensional object, and they're they're six-sided objects of equal sides, and uh, that's not what they are. That's why they're not cubes. 
Do we know what like the official term is for the Japanese version? Maybe because the save files are square. Oh, yeah. Might be. Oh, that that's one of those things that I feel like they just Luke kind of pick the name. We're just like, all right, this sounds cool. We'll Luke go with didn't it. Explain it. I don't give a crap. Moving <laughs> from <laughs> yeah. Luca ripped me off. I had made all that hard earned cash, and then she just stole all of it out from under me. I was supposed what? to you buy pencils didn't... with that for my you studies. Any of it? You took it from your mattress. I don't remember Luca stealing things from you. In the yeah, game. she takes money from you. She She's like, that was a money, great yeah. explanation, so I'm going to oh, take money because my explanation right. oh, was so Now good. I remember. I played the beginning of the game recently, and it's funny. If you have some money, but not a lot, she will take your money, but then you will be in debt to her. What? <laughs> oh my like, god. Uh, it's like, you owe me this much money. But and then you have to perfect. do the pay Luca back side quest. <laughs> How do you do that if she basically dies when everybody else does in the village? She doesn't die, she, she just goes into Chrono Cross. Yeah, she just teleports. I think, that, I think that's just called debt forgiveness. Like, she, she's gotta fund her orphanage somehow. Yeah. Spoilers for Chrono Trigger. I have some very mixed feelings about her, and I did play the beginning of Chrono Trigger. <laughs> I'm gonna you probably gonna go time. delete that file anyways because it's been way too long and I'm pretty sure I missed some things. Probably. But, uh, so yeah, uh, they're cubes because that's the word they used. Anyways, it's really cute that they have a little um, scene where there's like the, the save cube manufactory in the middle of Solaris. Uh, that's how the Gazel Ministry is spying on your party. But, like... How many other <laughs> games go out of their way to be like, oh, by the way, this uh, interactive element, here it is in the background, we're gonna make it. Yeah, not too many games, especially of the time, did that, <laughs> yeah. though. But yes, Chrono Cross did that as well. Which it did share a, a writer from Zeno Years, so... Hmm. I think, yeah, it, it was becoming a bit more popular to explain what the fuck the save point was, though there are still plenty of games even today where it's just like, it's the save point and move on with your goddamn life. Those cheeky game designers. So, yeah. <laughs> Plus immersion. Uh, uh, there's actually a really a, a cute little comic in the official Four Coma thing where it's... Faye and Party have never saved, so at some point Krellian is asking the Gazel Ministry where they are, and they're like, Ah, uh, we don't, we don't know. <laughs> they didn't save. We don't know where they are. That is cute. I'll find it so you can post it. I guess that's what's uh, gonna be our picture for this one, then? Not the Bartweiser beer? We'll figure out a picture later, mm. but... We should I, have I one of our that. sponsor, Bartweiser. Ramses and him have, like, clashed how many times and you couldn't even put a tracking device on Faye? <laughs> well, because their tracking device was the memory cubes. But if I you... know! <laughs> they couldn't make a compact one to put on him. Anyway, uh, what other questions do you demand answers from us? Um, I think we talked about this yesterday, but I'm not quite sure if it was before or after David had his unfortunate incident with the computer. The crash. The crash. Um, so, like, what kind of a freaking moron doctor lives on top of a mountain after a, an entire valley of wolves? Satan. What if he just wanted a nice view from his window? I mean, it's pretty clear that they're not a problem for Satan. Yeah, true. I mean, it might or be that Faye, he for that matter. expects to. No, did Faye. anyone did anyone have any trouble with the start of that game at all? Yes. Okay, I don't mean the jumping. I mean the fights. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Although that well, does bring into question how good Satan is at jumping. The HP goblin hopgobs. I didn't find them to be that bad. I don't remember anything being like uh, no, more nothing than was horrible. Two hits at the start. It yeah. was just the jumping that was yeah. For me. I forgot how far into the game you were before you realized that there were two jumps. Wait, there are two jumps. Yeah, 
There's the mm-hmm. normal triangle jump, and then there's circle triangle. Yeah, the jump higher. Oh, is the running farther. jump. Yeah. Thing. Oh yeah. But you don't actually have to run. You just have to hold the circle button while you hit the triangle button. Mm. Do you have any other problems with Satan? I have many problems with Satan. He's a bastard. Okay. Um, <laughs> but um, also probably the best character. Um, but moving on from that, um, he has two surnames. What the fuck, guys? Warren Zevon also has two surnames. Warren is a permissible first name. Huga well, is not. That's like saying my name is um, Smith Jones. You wouldn't do that. Actu- wouldn't do that. Uh, actually, fine. Fine. actually, in fantasy land, names can be whatever. That's a good point. But also, I don't really want to give Nether Realm Studios a pass for Takeda Takahashi because that's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> like, come on, dudes. You could put slightly more than the minimum effort. Okay, next dumb question is, um, Yui Uzuki is an extremely Japanese name. Yes. I will totally accept that Satan decided he was going to take on a, a false identity, and furthermore, decide to take his wife's name in marriage, because why the fuck not? It's a great cover story. How okay. come they're the only family in, in the entirety of Shavat? That has a Japanese name. Because we don't see everybody in Shavat. How many of the NPCs did you ask their names? Like, you don't know. There were a bunch of Akitos running around. Takeda Takahashi was there. (laughs) 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 Whenever I try to tell people about Fei Fong Wong, they think it's a really goofy name. That he was named after Wang Fei Fang. Who is a real person. Yeah. So just tell them they're fucking racist. <laughs> um, yeah, that's really what it boils down to. Most people who are stupid and racist will say dumb things about Chinese names and I get angry. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> um. Next question. Evans okay. S- oh. How about on the way to Satan's house, there's a whole bunch of things that um, we had to pick up. And the payoff for some of those <laughs> things didn't come until, like, nearly the end game. So... That, oh, that happened. To be fair, lot. you didn't have to pick them up. I just made you pick them up. I know, but, like, Midori's ring, I expected to hand it off to her when we finally met them again in Shavat, but no. I didn't even get to do it there. I had to go... All the way to Dis 2, then mess around in some other places, and then go back to Shavat. And only then do I get to give the ring back to her. It's like we forgot about it until the very last second, and like, oh wait, there was this one plot point that you made in the first area. I'm just liking to imagine that they were like, you want your ring back? Too bad. You- and then at the end of the game, they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> I just imagine that Faye completely forgot until all of his personalities and, like, memories merged, and then he was like, oh shit, I never gave that ring back. <laughs> I, I like that last nice scene. rush before the end, where they're like, alright, let's just wrap up whatever loose ends we could think of. But anyways, yeah, the um, the Hercules ring would have been really useful probably about 40 hours ago. Like, if it came up around the same time as the wizardry ring, then I would have used it. I would have done all of my level grinding with both of those rings on. I would have gotten would all you of like my to death see blows. What the rings do? Okay, um the the wizardry ring was supposed to give you extra points toward your uh death blow so you learn them faster and um the Hercules ring was supposed to increase the number of EXP you got in general. Um but yeah. By the time you get that ring, um you are one fight away from the end, so, like, experience points don't matter at this point. Like, you needed that thing, like, way in the beginning. Why did you save it until the end? Like, you could have just, like, not given me anything and I would have been okay. Padding. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I like the idea <laughs> I mean, of, yeah, probably. quote-unquote, having to go to disc 2 implies disc 2 is a different place. <laughs> practically is. It is. It's, it's a, a different, different game. dimension. Mm-hmm. 
It's I a different game. I have to go to disc two. It sounds like it feels like a different game. <laughs> Version of the map that you can fly on. <laughs> Which, it's like, that's another thing, actually. You bring that up. That Think about how late in the game they give you the ability to go everywhere. Like, yeah. fly anywhere super easily. In Like, that's the coolest feature of the Yggdrasil, is whenever it gets the ability to fly. And you can't do it until, like, what, the last 20 minutes of the game? Unless you, you know, you spend that time, as you I mean, you can spend as much time as you want doing whatever, tying up all the loose ends with it. But you get it before but, that. I yeah, you, you get, get it, it when you get Maria. Yeah, you can fly beforehand. You want to talk about games where they take forever to give you your fucking uh, spaceship thing that my brain is forgetting what the the fucking term is? Airship. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, Tales of Destiny. Oh. I'm at like near the second to last dungeon. I still just have a boat. Oh, you got a wow. dragon though. I don't have a dragon. My dragon is broken. Your dragon broke? But there isn't. My dragon has been broken. I only had it for a cutscene and then it broke, and now I have a boat, which is a dragon, but not the same dragon. There are two dragons. <laughs> I hope you sent your dragon to the hospital. Or the <laughs> okay, I got my me. broken ship dragon that I can't use right now. I can only use it, like, just before the final dungeon. And then I have my ship dragon, which is fine, but it's a ship. And then you have the ant. The ant, it just goes up and down. It's an elevator. It's a glorified elevator. Hmm. Okay, okay. So. Good game. Good game. Yeah. Yeah. Returning to Xenogears and my attempt to read my own notes, which are typed up, but still pretty much about as bad as my own handwriting. Why did you pick such a shitty font, then? This conversation didn't go in the order of my notes. It's trying to um, go in some order, and clearly conversations don't go in logical order, so shrug emoji. Can't believe you were destroying the mysticism around this podcast. Yes, we've never but referenced the fact that we have notes. <laughs> Meanwhile, no, you probably heard me shuffling actual papers in the previous two. <laughs> if I wrote this by hand, oh my gosh, I'd probably, probably be 20 pages. My handwriting is bad. I have a few more notes on Satan, though, before we move on. Hey, what? Uh... There are, like, two more points on Satan here, though, I mean... One of them's about Midori, although it's... Anyway. Uh... You have the sleeper agent thing. We discussed that, though. Okay. Yeah, um, we discussed that right. way, way in the beginning of yesterday. Look, you want me to That's remember true. shit from yesterday? No. <laughs> okay. I mean, this is all in one one take. What, 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 there was no part one or part two. No, no. You're going to have to do a lot of editing to get the that giga out, dude. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's already been mentioned so many times that there's two parts. We're just going to replace it with, like, random hot sounds that Franz has recorded. You know, that would be perfect. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so what's your next point on this list? Um, I'm trying to find them. Um, it starts with Bart? Well, that was something you had mentioned uh, yesterday. Or the day before Did that, I? yeah, um, that um, some of your dojins actually... Oh, no, uh, not that one. <laughs> spell Bart's name wrong, but you know what, that's okay. Pat, yeah, Pat. that wasn't the point I meant. Uh, but it, I, I just thought it was interesting that they, when writing the names in English, because they did not know how it would be localized, uh, incorrectly guessed Balto. And uh, President Balto becomes president because of popular support, which makes no sense. They're like, I don't want to be a monarch. I want to be a pirate. No! No, I'm going to abdicate. No, you're not going to abdicate. You're going to be a rightfully governing person because we decided so. Because what is government? I mean, they had just been supporting this guy's rise to power for a while, so when he says, actually, I don't want it, they're going to go, excuse you? Yeah, you do. We have died for you, sir. Put Sigurd in charge. <laughs> He's actually competent. I mean, Bart basically does put Sigurd in charge. 
Oh, okay, now I'm on board. Okay, I was like, what are we talking about? <laughs> Sacred for president. President Balto. Oh, that's what confused me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who the fuck is Balto? And then we just then covered who the fuck Balto is. <laughs> it's when you incorrectly guess how Balto is going to be you know, localized in English. Yeah, yeah, I get I get it. I was I had to pull start my, my brain a little bit a few times. You saw all of the pictures from the other night, didn't you? The pictures are just a caption that says Balto. No, I did not see those. Scroll <laughs> up. Well, we'll worry about that later. Okay. <laughs> Move on. Move on. Now is not the time. Moving onward. Um, yeah, one last point I would like to make uh, before we start wrapping up, I guess, unless you can think of something else, is that um, when you fight with... Um, I can think of names. Emeralda. Um, yeah. And she casts... Um, how do you pronounce this? Aquadam? Aquadam? Whatever, the um, full area water attack. Um, the animation for that particular spell is all of the, the robots ascending and then a deluge of water and some stones floating in it, right? When you actually fight her as a boss, all four of the robots go up before the deluge of water comes in. That's a mistake. I don't remember that. Hold on. I, I gotta look that up. Wait, the, ro- the robots can't be buoyant? It's that they should be on screen because they're being attacked, because normally when Emeralda uses the attack while your party's gears go away, the enemy stays to indicate they are being hurt. Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, gotcha. so you ascend, and you don't get any water damage, but then, actually, you take all this hit point damage. So That was one of her spells, Yes, correct? I one did say spells. that. Okay, so the problem is, you're not supposed to use her spells, you're supposed to use her death blows? Mm. I'm kidding. Well, she's <laughs> supposed to use her death blows. But then she just spams you with magic instead. Yeah. Uh, actually, one more point that I... Oh, yeah, Sorry. yeah, gotcha. But one one more point that I see on this list that I know was not brought up last time. Mm -hmm. Uh, You have a note here that says id equal Hisoka from Hunter x Hunter, or is it just Hunter Hunter? It's Hunter Hunter. The X. I've always said Hunter Hunter. Yeah. There is no pronunciation of the X. It's just there for the look. Hunter multiplied by Hunter. Yes. Hunter times Hunter. (laughs) Hunter. It's Hunter squared. That's how you're supposed to say it. <laughs> uh, anyway, I have nothing to add to this because I have not seen the show. Uh, is made obvious by my not being sure how to say the title. I just figured yeah. that was something that might be fun for people who have heard of the show to discuss. It's just fun to me because I've never heard anybody make that connection before. Well, I've never heard that either. <laughs> well, okay, think about think about it this way: What does Hisoka bring to Hunter Hunter? He's he's a clown. He's yeah. ostentatious as hell. Has a great stage presence. Every time he comes in, we don't know what's going to happen. We know something's going to happen. We don't know. He doesn't know. Things are going to happen, and they are off the walls. Yeah, that makes sense. And we, because he's an antagonist, there's always a lot of tension between all of the characters when it happens. So they're all like extremely wound up. So when it makes his first appearance... Uh, in Zaboim, when uh, Krellian's checking out with um, Emeralda, and this rando just breaks in and's like, "Hi, I'm gonna go fight you now." It just it felt like one of those kinds of scenes. Yeah, he's a complete wild card. Yeah, Absolute wild card, and it's part of why I really love that fight. You just, you just, I do like that too. You felt tense, like I, as the player, was like, "Oh crap, something." Absolutely horrible is going to go wrong, and I put in like three hundred percent of my attention into this one fight. Yeah, it's a good character. I I felt exact. I mean, I felt exactly the same way about that fight. I think that was the best fight in the game, and I think that the mood for it was set like just right with all the things that were. Because I mean, it does. You're in the middle. 
it, it's not that alone. It's also that you're in the middle of like something else, and you think that, you know, you think, oh no, they're getting away, and then that happens, and it's like, what? This is like I did not expect this, <laughs> like right here, and it's such a powerful presence that it puts off there and such, and. You know more as the player because you've seen the like the few cutscenes that they've had where he's just like fucking some shit up like full size gears. Yeah, it just turns emergency into a full on crisis, and I did appreciate that. And yes, that is the best fight in the entire game. I thought you also liked the id fight in the mindscape, or not in the mindscape, but well, phase in the mindscape um... in the blue zone. No, I didn't I... say anything about that one. Okay, I thought you had said something in no, that, the past. No, uh, that one in Zaboim was the one that I was... The one I was... Delete! Calling. I think also that the backdrop of the Zaboim ruins, like... Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like how really far pretty. below you, like, an entire ancient city, like, what looks like thousands and thousands of feet below you as, like, the backdrop for that fight really helps as a, as a set piece yes. for yeah. the mood. Um, there's, there's like a multitude of reasons, really. The, the music really did it for me in that fight. I actually had not thought very much about that track, uh, until I got to that fight and that, that fight made that track like one of my favorites in the game. And that would be the one who is torn apart? Mm-hmm. Okay. The one who is torn apart. Okay. I haven't actually Either. seen the track list for this, so I'm I'm pretty sure that sounds pretty awesome in Japanese, but in English it just sounds so awkward. Speaking of awkward songs, uh, what is the name of the ending song? And could you tell us anything about the, like, just describe it, but I don't know, the way that maybe my brother would. I'm going to regurgitate everything that you had said. Okay. Off-brand Celine Dion. End quote. <laughs> Yes, that is what my brother had said about it 20-some-odd years ago when he beat the game. He complained about the off-brand Celine Dion. And then, I think, David, you also called it off-brand Celine Dion. Me? Yeah, you. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Titanic. Yep. So. And what's the title, did we say? Nope. Small Two of Pieces. Of pizza. Small to a pizza. Small two pizzas. <laughs> two small pieces of pizza. Could you, yes. could you repeat that a little louder? I've got the... I've, I'm ordering on the phone right now. <laughs> <laughs> two small pizzas. A Domino's. Two small of pizzas. What? <laughs> Small, small of, of two pizza. pizzas. Small of two pizzas. What? <laughs> All right. Anything else that you want to bring up that you may have already brought up but don't remember? And actually, I have one more question for you after you answer that. Um. Honestly, I actually don't remember what we discussed yesterday. Well, if there's anything where you're like, I really want to make sure I say this and you're not sure, that's fine too. Uh, I'm pretty sure I said most of those things. Okay. Um. Actually, no, I'm not sure anymore. But you know what? That's okay. Yeah, that's, that's okay. fine. I know one thing we need to talk about that I'm, I am almost certain we did not talk about. Final dungeon. No, some of the well, that and some of the boss fights in general. Okay. Um, okay. I remember there being one in particular that you had mentioned to us before uh really not lacking <laughs> yeah and i don't think you mentioned it oh yes shakan bald man <laughs> shakan can go eat my calculator what kind of insult is that i've never <laughs> go eat my <laughs> calculator <laughs> i mean I, that I, from adventure time. <laughs> what? i can't say <laughs> Okay, I, that... I I can't say anything more profane than eat my shorts on this. 
We, we can't? Oh, you, shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, fuck. fuck us. Oh, beans. <laughs> but, like, okay, um... Our, our wonderful viewers remember this fight where he's basically got himself um, a power cable and he sticks it into the power source that's standing right behind him and he's like constantly <laughs> pulling HP. So like, after probably getting my ass handed to me a half a dozen times, I feel like, if it wasn't actually that it felt like it, um, we whipped out a calculator and tried to do the, the, um, the math just so we could figure out are we gating on this bastard's hit points or not because this fight was obnoxious i can't believe they copied cheap this for fight for chibi robo <laughs> it's like chibi robo real big hey. shikan is like a gear with a gas station if the gas station were indestructible <laughs> yeah I, okay to be fair if you tried to do the ashura fight in uh, final fantasy 4 cuz that's a side quest um, it's not actually mandatory, unlike this bastard. Um, it was doable, but I didn't even have time to sit down and think. I was just like, okay, heal everybody, try not to die, and pound the shit out of this lady until hopefully either everybody dies or she dies, whichever comes first. And I really thought I was going to have to do that fight twice, but somehow, miraculously, I beat Ashura in one try with only four characters. Yeah, there's definitely some uh, war of attrition to that one. Yeah, that one was brutal, but nothing like Shakan. Shakan was just, like, just sitting there and being sassy about it. <laughs> At least, and like the the humor of him trying to do a melee attack while he's hooked up to the machine, kind of fizzles <laughs> out after a bit. When it's like, this is my third try, just just die, just die, dude. I don't remember having issues. In he I, was pretty obnoxious. I, I agree. Either, honestly, I have to like but... look up this fight to be honest. No. I I remember it being very obnoxious. I, I th- So you are it wasn't my game. least favorite fight in the game, but it was real close to it. Which was your least favorite, then? Oh, Opiomorph. Oh, I thought that one was pretty easy, honestly. I didn't like Opiomorph. Well, it was if you knew what to do, yeah. And I also didn't like the Deus with like the having the HP. Gross Rotten Turtle Days. I, I, the, okay, so the thing about Opiomorph for me is... Like, I... Whenever I figure it out how to beat him. I was like, if I hadn't figured this out, I feel like I could have been here for freaking ever. It would have been especially bad if I had had to watch that like 20 minute cutscene right before that fight multiple times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's why I was like, yeah, this is probably the worst. This is just way too specific. Oh, this fight. Before I get to my question, I actually have two more points that I don't think we addressed. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them is the meeting of Margie and Billy. Ah, uh, yes. I I thought that was really cute. How they're like, oh, let's talk about a comparative religion sometime. And then uh, Margie addresses Billy with the wrong rank. It just, it's just like, oh, this is, this is a tiny little cultural note about the difference between the churches of Ethos and Nissan. Cute. But that's really all I had to say about it. And Billy doesn't correct her. I think he's gloating secretly. <laughs> Why, yes, I am a father. Yes, I, I got him promoted! <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other thing is mostly because I know Justin has a note on this, but the Solarin mobile suppression unit um, dandelion thing fight. I think that was for the Yggdrasil the, four. Yeah, but the Yggdrasil four. Uh yes, the one tiny fight where you are a gigantic um robot who gets to use a giant submarine as a battering ram against an even more obscenely large robot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real guys. If something like that were to show up, I'm pretty sure that it's probably at least as big as the giant robot that Eggle was probably piloting. 
are you talking about Makanis? <laughs> or the po- one that, uh, no, probably Yaldabaoth. Oh, okay, okay. I cannot remember the names of half of these gears. Uh, so Eggle was the guy, and he was inside Yaldabaoth, and Yaldabaoth piloted the Mac- yeah, the Makanis. So which part of the ro- You know the, when you say it that egg? way. He's the size of the biggest big robot. Okay, so that would be the Makanis. Yeah, that's why I was the... Uh, uh, a robot in a robot in a robot. Exactly, <laughs> nesting <laughs> robot <laughs> dolls! <laughs> God, if I could paint nesting robot dolls of Eggle, Yaldabaoth, and the Makanis, I oh, would. I would love that. That would be amazing. It would be really good, but I cannot fucking do that. I cannot translate those designs into Matroska dolls. Where are we going to even get those dolls? Oh, you can you can get those that can be customized. That's not a problem. The only robot I think I could easily do that with is that one from that Expelled from Paradise movie. You just because it's just an egg robot. <laughs> <laughs> you can also do Eve from Wally. Wally. Yes, that's true. Okay, uh, and now my question. Mm-hmm. So based on your experience with Gears and your experience with Saga the Anime, what are your thoughts about what you will experience in Saga the Game? Specifically Xenosaga the Game. Um, episodes 1 and 2 are probably going to be a slog. <laughs> but I have to do both of them in order for episode 3 to make sense because that's where you get all of the good robot fighting. Yeah. I am looking forward to actually fun robot fighting well the good news is that in one you can just ignore that you have robots entirely Mm -hmm. yep and the game is actually pretty fun one is actually i think like yeah i I think one one is good i also think i've been very hard on xenosaga one in the past because i remember when i first played xenosaga one i i loved it for about 10 hours and then i just stopped like, I just got really fed up with the battle system. And I kind of just forced myself through it. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't exactly enjoying playing it. And then Xenosaga 2 was kind of the same way. But then more recently, I was playing Xenosaga 1 to capture footage. And I don't know. Like, the battle system just seemed to kind of click with me a lot more. Mm-hmm. And I just had a hard time putting it down. <laughs> um, I am a little bit daunted by the whole menu process. Like... It just seems like it's from that era of too many sub menus is better. One's menus suck. Two's menus not so bad. Three's menus are pretty much perfect, but one's yeah. menus kind of like it. It does a really poor job of explaining to you things. Yeah, it it really does. Like, luckily, yeah. Oh, go on. Like in just in the beginning of the game, just make sure. To take your heal from whatever your healer is and copy and paste it to all of your other characters. That will get you through the game. Ah, uh, yeah. Because the game is, like, not very specific about, oh, hey, you can, like, copy and paste skills from your other characters to your other characters. You can do what? Yeah. You have to use, like, points. You have to use them, points, but, yes, but you, you are can. allowed to do that. Yeah, uh, I was going to say on the bright side about Xenosaga 1 is I found that you don't have to spend just a whole lot of time in those menus at least. So there is that that is nice. Every once in a while, of course, but episode not just you won't have to once you get what you're doing. Yeah, in episode 1. I feel like once you get what you're doing, you only have to change stuff here and there. Yeah, and I should also say that like if you're used to faster battle animations, you're not going to get that in Xenosaga 1. They Some of them can take a while. And you can skip a couple of them. Like, I know you can skip X-Buster and um, Erdekaiser. Mm-hmm. But, like... X-Buster, Erdekaiser, Part of Maiden's Kiss. And part of Maiden's Kiss, yes. Transformations. Anything that has but, uh, CG. otherwise, like... What was that? Oh, I was just saying anything that has, like, a CG cutscene, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anything that's not rendered within the battle itself, uh, you can, you can actually skip. But like, that's from that era of, uh, long attack animations and crazy summon animations. So, mm-hmm. those can get annoying 
uh, if you are used to faster battles. And that was one of the things that actually kind of drove me insane when I first played Saga. Because, like, they're cool animations. Don't get me wrong. You'll see them and you're like, oh, wow, that's actually really cool. But after having to watch them for the 20th time, it can get a bit grating. I still like watching Ziggy's kick. Yeah, I... I... Saga 1 is... Like, it's actually fun, but it's actually kind of easy. Like... It's my favorite. Yeah, it is it it is easy, and also probably my biggest issue with the battle system more than anything else is lack of variety in the battle music. There's a battle theme that's really good, but I really wish there was an actual boss theme. Yeah. I mean, lack of variety in the music is the biggest criticism one can say for the first game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's a big one, for sure. I could almost throw that complaint at Xenogears, honestly. Gears is weird with its uh, music, too. It doesn't like, it, have it that has, many, but they There's a good. few situations where it changes it up, and there's like a different song that's not usually a battle theme. I as, used to... Um, like, the music in battle, which I like, but there's a lot of times in Xenogears where it's just one of two songs, and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, there aren't that many tracks, but the tracks are very good, whereas with Saga 1, I found that there aren't that many tracks, and most of them are kind of forgettable. Yeah. Um, I liked a couple of them. But yeah, yeah, there that are lost... a couple good ones, but a lot of them are just like, uh... Eh. Well, and also that the dungeons boss. are completely silent. Why would you do that? I yeah. you like footsteps. Weird. In Saga is like the pinnacle of footsteps. Yeah, it's really weird. The Saga two and three are much better about that, yes. but yeah, that first game is <laughs> definitely going to throw you for a loop at first. Uh, um, also, having listened to the Saga three OST with basically no context, it kind of all does sound pretty much the same, which is very much like the whole church choiry stuff, like. I've told you guys the amount of Christianity and this has made me squick. Um, I'm very hesitant about this game, but I'm going to do it because you guys asked. You don't have to do anything. No. No, I don't, but like, I feel like being part of this group for so long, I should definitely at least try it. You are, okay. No peer pressure. That's, that's fair. This exactly. is totally peer pressure. <laughs> That's also How is this of, like, peer pressure when we just said you don't have to do it? Self press, like the opposite to, of like, peer pressure. Th- there's an invisible goal, Mark. I feel like I have to just like at least give you the patience and time of day to try both of both of these games, which are within my grasp. Whereas, like, I'm sorry, uh, Xenoblade, as beautiful as you look, I just don't have it in me to do it. I really just don't have that skill set. If I did, I, mean, I would totally do it. I'm perfectly happy to play in stream two for you. I just have to finish my last playthrough. Whichever of you guys does it first, I'm looking forward to this. Yep. I have a list, actually, of things I want to finish in Xenoblade 2 before I start my new game plus file. Mm-hmm. I think I'm so once I get those end, done, so I, I will actually start it. Yay! Through. Right. I'm, and then start a second new game plus file, and maybe one day I'll actually get Nim. Yeah, because what's crazy about Zombie 2 is that there's actually like yeah. a lot of new content in New Game Plus. There's a whole bunch of blades that I never got to see because they're exclusive to New Game Plus. Yeah, I was the same way. I I was like, no, I'm gonna get all these things before I do it. And I, honestly, I'm thinking about just going into New Game Plus <laughs> at some point because I I'm only missing two blades that I can get in the first playthrough. <laughs> I'm just missing one. Yeah, I I got all the blades. It was kind of funny because it was MAGFest where I brought my Switch and one of the people that I was um with in the hotel room, they just took my game and were just activating core crystals and got the rest of the rare blades for me. Wow, wow. that's lucky. That's cool. Wow. Yeah. Special thanks so, to that person. Yeah, they're, they're great. <laughs> I kind of Set, I got so many and I mostly started sitting, setting the uh, extra blade stuff aside so I could just work on affinity charts because I was having a lot more fun doing that. Yeah, what I'm yeah. doing is I'm going to finish every affinity chart that I started and any of the blades that I got more recently where I haven't touched at all, I'm going to save all of them for New Game Plus. Alright. 
But anyways, back to Xenogears and how our squid feels about it. Um, did we actually talk about the final dungeon in the last one, or should I talk about it now? Oh, go ahead and talk about it now, because yeah. in yeah. the worst case, uh, we repeat ourselves. Exactly. Okay, final dungeon time. That first floor, not too bad. That second floor was miserable. I remember it took me a couple tries to beat it. Like, um... Second floor just uh, takes forever. Yeah, it does. And even with the map, I was like, what on earth is happening here? Because I couldn't find the switches. But that's because I was looking for a very different kind of switch. I didn't realize I was supposed to be looking for the laser light beams. And then after that, and um, two ASCII maps and a hand-drawn map. I did actually go that far. I just pulled out a pen and just scribbled the whole thing out. Then I was finally able to get through that whole dungeon. Jeez, that took me, what, three hours? <laughs> no, that checks out. Yeah. That's that's about how, that's close to how long that dungeon takes for, even if you have like a guide in front of your face and know where, everywhere to go, that's about how, it would take at least two hours, I think, in most cases. I know it definitely took me more than two hours, but I think it was three because of how many times I had to double back. Um, and then we get to the final boss. Um, so I, with all that buildup, I was actually expecting either Miang or Ellie to actually just show up and we'd have to fight her, but then we didn't. Nope. No, we just got these, um, iridescent blob things. And, um, yeah, so I fought the iridescent blob things first and then finally did Deus. And I blew through that fight really quickly. I was surprised, honestly. Yeah. You got through that super fast. Yeah. I think yeah. the only part of the Deus fight that gave me a, gave me much trouble was the, the emblem on the floor mm -hmm. thing. Oh, the one that drains your fuel? Yeah, that one was pretty annoying. But other than that, I don't think I had a lot of trouble with any um, of the, the others. The one that killed me the first time around was actually the one that stops time. So, um, I accidentally hit the, the, uh, bubble before I could change characters, so two of my party members were already at, like, less than 50%, and then, sh um, whatever that thing was, the pendulum thingy, I think, um, no, was it the pendulum thingy? Well, anyways, um, it stopped time, so only one of those characters actually had a turn to heal, and then none of the other party members were able to do anything. So that's how she got to uh, three people in like the first turn. Oh, that's right. Yeah, one of those you fight the start screen from Chrono Trigger. Mm -hmm. Is that's that what like... that is? <laughs> it is now. That's like my least favorite part about all, basically all of the bosses from Xenogears is that like almost all of them have a mechanic that you have to deal with that you never see again. They're super gimmicky. And you gimmicky. have not seen up and until that point. And I'm just like, um, how am I supposed to deal with this? And if I don't have a guide and I've never seen it before, like, like, like the only reason I don't complain about like Saga 3 is because Saga 3 basically like kind of tells you. But, like, Gears is kind of silly. It's super gimmicky with the boss fights, <laughs> especially the, like the further in you get, the more gimmicky the boss fights get. Oh, it's a challenge. It spices really things clear. up every once in a while. Yeah. Perfect game. No. <laughs> Far from perfect. <laughs> game. It's not ter it's not terrible that it does that by any means. What, you don't mean Gears isn't the greatest detail. PlayStation game ever made? It's the best RPG exactly. ever, guys. That's yeah. the best thing that Square has ever produced. Yes. It is absolutely flawless. The storytelling is absolutely perfect. It, no other game comes anywhere close to being as uh, great and serious as Gears. Not like that other anime bullcrap that's infected the rest of the genre. Right. Final Fantasy Mystic Quest with a more coherent plotline. Oh, I'm just saying what people say online. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I thought you were reading my diary. <laughs> <laughs> that too. I thought you were, like, reading from Reddit or something. <laughs> I wouldn't That's be surprised. That's point. 
Yeah, I post my diary on Reddit. What up? <laughs> we should just start inserting <laughs> a copy pasta of that everywhere. <laughs> anyway. Hey. Anyways, um, yeah, so I got through days pretty quickly because I buffed up Satan way too much. Um, <laughs> Because I gave him the Kishin sword and then um, that thing that puts uh, your engine into overdrive. So whenever his turn came up, he just bashed the shit out of Deus. And then, so... Honestly, I really wish I had the opportunity to go back and see what it was like without having fought all those mini-bosses. Just to see how obnoxious it was. But, like, unfortunately, I don't have the time to do that right now, because we're in the middle of recording. Um, but Live stream. I mean, I could do that if you guys felt like, but I'm not sure it's going to make it into the final cut. Nah. Um, but, like, after that, I thought we were done. No, we are not done. <sighs> then you get this thing that is copy pasta of Ophio Morp, but without the... You know that sound, right? <laughs> um, whenever whenever she does uh, that one attack, and then you get the big ball of black smoke, that... It's... It's basically copy pasta of that same enemy, just without that one feature. And and you're doing yeah. that one-on-one, -on -one, so basically you may as well just turn on an auto battle if you have that feature available. Just, I bash you, you bash me, say, and then it's just like a matter of who runs out of hit points faster. Except that it's like an impossible to lose fight. Yeah, it just yeah, it felt like, anticlimactic. That, that fight is just set dressing. It was so much set dressing that I was that I forgot it was even considered a like, fight. If they <laughs> cut that fight in its entirety. I would have been okay. The fact that they left that in there made the entire Deus fight just seem like it missed something. Like, that should have been the end. Then you roll all the silly cutscenes, but like, no, we did not need one more angel fight. Anyways, that's all I have to say about uh, Urabolus. It was not necessary. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of a thing that Square was doing at the time of like, here's your actual final boss where it's a mm -hmm. boss you can't lose. Uh, no. Not Ouroboros was the shirtless Sephiroth of Xenogears. And it would have made some amount of sense within the context of what was going on if it was like Naked Fae versus Naked Krellian. <laughs> Since, you know, that's kind of where they are at that point. If it was and... Faye versus Crowley, and then I actually might have enjoyed it, but like... like... Mud wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Look, they, I'm saying they both naky except for a tiara and a hair tie. <laughs> and it, it would have... Because the premise of the fight is like my ideology versus your ideology... And then it's in Giant Robots, which is, like, the least fun fighting mechanic. And it's after you just did so many Giant Robot fights, it just would have been nice if it was, like, all right, here, we're symbolically fighting through fighting, and, you know, we're they, they can have clothes back, I guess. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> and you're on foot, and you can't lose, because, fine, you can't lose. Faye got ripped right. off. Yeah. Alright, but... He didn't put enough coins in. <laughs> Great. Okay, but I... Yeah. All right, I feel like this blast. is really okay. anticlimactic of a note to end on, but I guess that's kind of appropriate for Zeno Gears. Oh. Ouch. 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 Ooh, Manicom's gonna be good for this one. I'm sorry, we can <laughs> cut that! Ooh! <laughs> that's fine. No, it's not fine! We already, we already made fun of Zeno Gears. Right. Like, I'm, I'm already sitting here going, I love this game to bits and pieces. Also, it's a piece of shit. Don't play it. Can it, can this please <laughs> oh. come up, go on, get posted on like r slash JRPG? <laughs> I would, I would like to say something on this note. Actually, you know, like as someone who actually played through Xenogears 
a little more recently. It's been about, it's probably been about a year and a half since I have, but I had missed it, you know, before and came around to it late. So I, I remember, yeah, feeling a little bit like the end was in places. There were some parts of the end that I really enjoyed and there were some parts where I felt, yeah, it was, it was kind of anticlimactic. However, I think that like looking back on Xenogears as a whole, I remember it more fondly for the journey and just how like insane that journey was than what it ended up at. And I think there's a lot of value mm-hmm. in that. So, I mean, to end things on a slightly more positive note, uh, that's my two cents on that matter. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll say this too. Like, what made Xenogears really interesting to me was that it just kind of felt so different than anything I had played up until that point. I mean, I had played Xenogears a long time ago. This, we're talking like well over 10 years ago. It's the first time I played it. And it was cool to see all, to see these ideas like shown in a JRPG. And I liked the mix of cultures. I enjoyed the, combat like the hand-to-hand combat and also the robot fights it would it, and the fact that like the game tried to tell such a huge story and uh in the way it did i i you could we could talk about whether or not it was, it was successful at telling that story that's a whole other conversation in and of itself but it was cool to see a game try to do something as ambitious as it did even if it didn't quite do it well in my opinion because there's, there's a lot of things about this game that even at the time i was pretty critical of like there's a lot of boss fights that i didn't particularly enjoy there was plot threads was quite a few of which we actually even mentioned that i thought were either just not really touched on well enough or just straight up not explained at all but i think the general idea of gears is what makes it interesting and i think a lot of people they enjoy gears in spite of its flaws, um, and a lot of it, for some folks, the, those flaws are very much part of the charm. I was watching a video where somebody described Gears as a broken masterpiece, essentially. And they think that the idea of a game being as fragmented as Gears is, that's very much part of the appeal. Like some people said that, like even the, um, the simple, the simple imagery of the screen breaking is just representative of Gears as a whole. It's a broken mirror, but that's also what people enjoy about it. As opposed to a lot of, like, even a lot of other RPGs and things like that, um, I feel like this was one where I felt like I couldn't tell you at all what was going to happen next. I had no clue in a lot of cases. It's very, it's very scattershot mess, but it's kind of a beautiful one. I can agree with that. Yeah. It also has very nice replayability, so kudos. Yeah. All right. It's yeah, it's very snappy and fun to yeah. play, in my opinion. Huh? Um, at least on foot for the um, and like the robot, like we talk about the robot fights, the the gears fights being kind of bad, but that's only because by comparison to like how speedy and how much you can do in the on foot fights, they kind of. They don't feel quite as great. They to get very samey very us. fast, which mm-hmm. I think they get is very why samey they, fast. the mech boss fights had so many gimmicks. Yeah, and they make you build up turns to do much of anything, and you think, whoa, is this just Xenosaga 2, huh? Yeah, you think that <laughs> when you're playing Xenogears, you go, wait, I'm having exactly. a vision of the future. <laughs> I'm having a future vision, unless you go back and play it after you play Saga 2. But, you know, you when you get to Saga 2, you wonder, wait, why did they do this thing from Xenogears? <laughs> but, All right. anyway... When I get to Xenogears, really when cool. I get to Xenosaga, I'm probably going to have to um, play this episode again and be like, well, yeah, Nick, you told me so. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till you get to the Dameron. All right. Anyway. Well, I think this is a good place to sp- stop. Um... So yeah, um, thank you once again, everybody, for making it for this, especially you, Cilantro. Thank you for being our, our guinea pig, and know that we, we we wouldn't force you to take part in this if you didn't want to, so. Thank you for mm-hmm. having me. 
Yeah, and for what it's worth, like, I actually really appreciate your thoughts because um, I wanted to hear a fresh take on Zeno Gears. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it's there's value in hearing how someone who didn't grow up with these kind of games feels about it coming into it in 2020. Because oftentimes when I hear people talk about Zeno Gears, it's because, oh, yeah, I had this game as a kid. Or, oh, yeah, it, this is just good because it's golden era JRPG. So it's nice to get that kind of outside perspective on it. Broken Masterpiece. I will agree with that. Yeah, uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit, even though it had so many little hiccups here and there. <laughs> so many plot threads that could have gone in different ways. And if they ever sort out the rights and they actually do remaster this, I really hope that they flesh out disc 2, because that is the part I really want to see what they do. Hmm. All right. Okay. Um, let's, I guess, go around, and if there's anything you're working on or playing or anything, just let us know. Um, we'll start with you, Justin. So I guess I've been streaming a lot more lately over on Retro Roulette's channel. I just recently did a full playthrough of Mega Man Legends on there. That was a lot of fun. And then we just did the Xenoblade 2 anniversary stream. I think tomorrow I'm looking to do a Xenoblade Cross one as well. And by tomorrow, he means two months in the past. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Because it'll be... But uh, yeah, otherwise, I am still working on another review for Operation Rainfall. I just finished one of them. I have one more to do. And yeah. yeah... Uh, you can follow me on Retro Roulette. I will be streaming a lot more often. I'll also be tweeting about when I stream too. So just make sure you follow me on Twitter so you can get those updates. Otherwise, that's everything I'm up to right now. Okay. Uh, how about you, uh, Robin? Uh, I realized that I've never promoted my Xeno specific Tumblr, which okay. is felv at tumblr.com. Did you catch all that? Because my, my computer just hiccuped. Oh, you can say it again. Uh, or, well, I, th- I think I got the recording, but... Oh, okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, felv at felv.tumblr.com. I don't know why I said at. I'm used to Twitter. Uh, felv, P-H-E-L-V. Fog um, yelv. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you want to just explain where the name came from. Oh, Sorry. <laughs> 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 it's okay Bartoli was taken <laughs> um, I don't post there much because Tumblr doesn't really have much Xeno stuff on it All right. um, how about you Nick Okay, so you can check out my OnlyFans. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Show us um, the feet. Link, please. <laughs> where I post lots feet, of feet, pictures feet, of Bart's feet. feet. Yes. No. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm not doing much other than, you know, sometimes I post stuff on Twitter, but usually that's just like screenshots from games. And sometimes art and every once in a while cosplay cosplay has not been like a real active thing for me this year so why not but it's at n- <laughs> well i don't yeah. know uh. there might there might be something keeping us indoors all the time which is not a great excuse but uh the it meteor is a showers really good that's excuse. right here. yes it's a really good excuse for me to catch up on my gaming backlog and other things and art so yeah maybe i'll start posting more of that um I was going to add on to, like, with this retro roulette thing that Justin does, um, if some of you guys who listen to this podcast start paying attention to more retro roulette and, you know, maybe tweet some stuff out about it, maybe we will have, maybe they will have more, like, Zeno content on there in the future, mm-hmm. you know? There's always that possibility. So, Absolutely. And they're a lot of fun to watch, so follow them. Yep. That's my That's my promo for them. They're good guys. You're welcome, Sam and Ant. <laughs> All right, how about you, David? Um, I don't really have anything uh, going on. I just, uh, I'm playing Yakuza 0 right now. Um, on and off. And I have a Twitter account. That's it. Uh, trombone son, if you want. But other than that, not really anything. All right. Fair. You post the good arts. Yeah, I just basically like like and retweet 
Zeno and like shoujo related art and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. yeah, he posts the good arts. Well, t- re- that re- good the stuff. Good arts. <laughs> All right, and how about you, Cilantro? Um, well, I think I need to take a quick Xeno hiatus. I've been going through Grandma's <laughs> backlog, and uh, I think the next game I'm gonna start up is Final Fantasy VI. Oh, I'm excited for that. I love that one. Yeah, that's a good one. Good choice. That is my favorite. I've never played it. Okay, now I'm gonna have to definitely go get a webcam. I can't believe my friendship has literally just now ended with David. Oh, Ford. no! No! Oh god, my mic just peaked. Yep, I'm sorry. For Come real. on. Sorry. My mic just peaked. You can suplex a train. <laughs> I'm kidding. I could never stop being friends with David. I played Come some on. of it, but not all of it. I'm pretty sure it's a really long game, but I just finished the first Breath of Fire, and I'm like, I can't do that mechanic right now. I will get back Don't to worry, Breath of Fire later. Than years. It is much Don't shorter than Gears, don't worry. <laughs> hey, like Breath of Fire 2, you have to be level 6 in order to even get to the first dungeon. And like the amount of grinding that I've done on my current file is like, no, I can't do that right now. I'm not going back to grind hell. I'm going back to something that is pure and simple. I'm going to go straight over to whatever fantasy land they give me, and I'm going to appreciate it. Heck yeah, you will. If that makes any sense. I'm pretty sure anybody out here who's actually played Final Fantasy VI is probably going to be like, no, that's not what's going to happen. You're going to see, though. You're going to see all of your predictions are wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. (laughs) No, it's totally a happy land game. You're not going to experience any hardship whatsoever. You'll be fine. Awesome. Uh, But, uh, (laughs) Tyler, what are you up to these days? Um... I am, besides editing the podcast, um, um, been getting into Genshin Impact a little bit more than I was. Like, for a while, I kind of fell off of it, but now I'm, like, playing a lot more of it than I thought I would. So, there's that. Yeah, it does. That yeah, it, does. it gets a hold of you. Um, and then also, probably by the time this comes episode comes out, I'm also going to be guesting on RPG fans uh, podcast uh, Retro Encounter. We're going to be playing nice. uh, Bot and Kaitos, which I haven't played that in oh, nice. over a decade, so I'm kind of excited to see how that will how that will shape out, which I totally want us to possibly do an episode about like other Monolith Soft games one of these days on Snapchat. But Sounds good. We have s- oh, that'd be great because I actually recently bought Project Cross Zone Two. Oh yeah, so I could play it for that episode. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of, yeah, by the time this episode comes out, uh, we should already have out references part two, um, the anime episode with Cilantro, and the mech episode should be out by now. Oh, and I would assume that our holiday special should be out by now. Um, so. We don't know what, or at least I don't know at the moment, what episodes are going to come afterwards, but, um, yeah. If Shitty it, Dads. Wait, what? Shitty Dads. Oh, yeah! At some point, Shitty Dads. Um, so yeah, um, if ever, everyone, Inevitable Shitty Dads. <laughs> if anyone ever wants to, like, recommend, like, episode ideas, or just uh, make any corrections or anything that, anything we might have said. Uh, you can all, uh, email us at uh, xenochatpodcast at gmail.com, or you can tweet us at uh, xenochatpodcast. Um, all right, this was a really good episode, guys. Uh, thank you very much, and thanks, everyone, for listening, and have a good night. And before we head off, mm-hmm. I just want to say one more thing. Um, I noticed in the middle of the podcast that on the Game Awards... They just launched our player's voice. And yes, I know by the time this episode is up in the air, we're going to be way past this. But I figured it would be great to point out that Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition was actually nominated under player's voice. And you can cur- you can vote for it right now. I vote, vote for it right two months ago. So <laughs> just, I just want to let it be known that it was nominated for something. Yay. 
it's good. Congratulations. <laughs> it's awesome. on the record now. It's on the record, yeah. So vote for that. I did not fail to mention it. All right. Well, have a good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Save the game? <sighs> ghosts. Okay. No, I'm kidding. Oh, wait. Gotta so are we like, ghosts. are you ready? Or? Wait, are we going to do the actual start of the podcast, or is this just the before banter still? I, I feel like we've gone on for a bit. We have done It's that. time to start okay. the podcast. Yeah. yeah. Th- yeah. All right. This will just be bloopers then. Yep. Um, okay. <laughs> bloopers. Oh, we started the so podcast. Are we actually going to start the podcast? So entertaining. <laughs> These bloopers. <laughs> Boy, I like that one. They said, where they said, "I'm gonna start the podcast." Maybe it's the best blooper. Um. Okay. Hello, and welcome to a new episode of Zeno Chat. Uh, my name is Tyler, and I'm here with my co-host Justin. How's it going, everyone? Okay, we got quite a few people here today. Uh, first up, we have David. Hey. I think we have David. David. Hello? Oh, hi. Uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, and gosh. Nick? Living Blooper Nick is here. Did, did, you, did you hear me? <laughs> I, I, I stole did my you hear me? Oh, he heard you. <laughs> Do we just need to start over? Let's try Maybe. this again. <laughs> <laughs> That's the blooper. Huh. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Keep recording, but um, let's start. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Second Milsha main server room ahead. Access to the main server is currently restricted. All security must be disengaged in order to log in. <sighs> okay, after we psychologic... <laughs> Take two. Yep. Just leave it to Miyuki! actually did pull out that one um, link to um, uh, the Dark Id from um, episode... Yeah, episode 39. Uh, 29. I'm, I'm not tired. Can we just, like, cut that part? Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Okay, so I did pull out um the... um. <sighs> eh. Try this again. I'm okay. <laughs> Don't worry. Jin's got it. Thank you, you Jin. <gasps> okay, I... <laughs> Take three. What? I have to fight more? Okay, um, can I take a five-minute bathroom break? <laughs> no. Yes, just keep recording. Please? Yes. All right, I'll leave this on. I'll be back. Yeah, just be sure to mark it. Just clap. And you can timestamp, yeah. Oh, about the about ten the minutes in. Minute, hour and ten minutes. Oh my goodness, we've only been recording for an hour and ten minutes. Well, we were talking for more than that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A little more. I'm pretty. Well, we're actually moving along pretty at a pretty good pace. I hope so. For some reason, this is telling me it only has 36 minutes left, even though I know it has more than that. But it uh, will probably try and cut me off. Oh no! Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I don't... I'm pretty tired. So. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. I was like, if you need to head out early, you know, mm-hmm. go for yeah, it. Yeah. You you do that, and also. I will I will let you guys know if I have to head out early because of the the weird audacity problem. I don't understand mm-hmm. what the deal is with that. I feel like it has some kind of built-in yeah. cache or something that's like, "Oh no, you only have this much space left." And I'm, I'll look at the hard drive that it's set to save this stuff to and it'll be like, "Oh, you only have 365 gigabytes left on this hard drive." Oh, yeah, that explains why I can't record more. I have I have no clue. But anyway, I will 
I'll have to look up something on that later. But I'll I'll, I'll let you guys know if I have to like bow, bow out or something. Okay. Hopefully not. I Hopefully hope not, not either, but I never know with this thing. It's weird. What's that? That looks cute, whatever that is. I mean, what looks cute? I want cute stuff. I don't know what this is, but it looked cute, so... Yeah, I see stuff like that sometimes. Oh my god, I just now saw what Bob posted in Musee Do Whatever. It's amazing. That's amazing. Where do I post this? I always... <gasps> oh, God. I always imagine that if, like, a Mega Man movie ever gets made, <laughs> The Rock should play him, because it would be terrible, and I would love it. So bad. Can you smell what Mega Man's cooking? <laughs> I hope... Okay, cool. So it looks like Jesse canceled the upgrade. Uh, yeah. Um, so... can you access... The site. Yep, I'm gonna test that right now. Okay. I hope that when he gets to Doctor Wily in the movie, he's like, "Shut it, jabroni!" and fires a blast at him. Ugh. I'm still running into the same message, but let me try incognito mode. It could just be cash. Okay. Yeah. Now I can access it. Nice. I don't know what is. This is like an anime thing. Where do I post this? Hello? Oh, no, we lost Jen. Oh, who dropped? Oh, no. Everybody's still Our recording. Host. That was At the least. perfect time for my audio to drop. Perfect indeed. Well, I'm back from the bathroom. Um, I don't know what that is, but it looks cute, so... <laughs> I've never heard of this. Who that? Happy-go-lucky days. Ooh. Okay, that's the... That does look cute. That's official art from after Emeralda grows up. Yeah, but you see it how it looks kind of like a bikini, right? Yeah, yeah, I see that. I thought you meant like the young, you like see? the younger version oh. was what I was thinking of. I was like, the, well, the younger like version a- sprite. It's kind of not quite as obvious, but like I'm trying to find her sprite artwork, and it's hard. Didn't the Xeno Gear sprites only get ripped very recently? I believe so, yeah. Cat made a big deal out of it. Or was it oh, Queenie? Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, One of I, those two. Oh, gosh, we lost Jin again. <laughs> somewhat. Okay, so somewhat, because there were already a few of them ripped from a long long while back, but they, they take a lot, because whenever you rip them directly, they're, they're basically divided into fours. Like, they will, they had diagonal divides across them, and then they had like horizontal through the middle Mm -hmm. and so you would have to piece them together in a weird way i actually have seen some of those rip sprites and it was like yeah no wonder it's it's not impossible by any means but it's it's kind of a nightmare Mm -hmm. to repiece these together i can't take anymore all right Shall we get back to it? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Um, where, where were we? We were at the, um, what sort of weddings are there in Lahan, right? Yes. yes. Well, clearly yeah. they have to fight to the death. Finally, we could be rid of Timothy. <laughs> <laughs> but Timothy's a good boy. Praying Mantis wedding. <laughs> anyway, what are other things that uh, stuck out? Oh, I have a whole bunch of notes about Zaboing. Tell me about Zaboing. Oh, no. <laughs> Um, okay, so somebody mentioned uh, there's Big Joe lore, and I completely missed that. Oh no, we lost David. No. No. We're gonna have to restart this when he comes back. Wait, we did? Oh, yeah, his computer, yeah, his computer died. died. I see oh. that now. Oh no. Oh. Oh no, his computer died. Oh no, the audio. Uh. Yeah, it's gonna be rough. The first episode. Oh no. Uh, you know. We're gonna have to do a retake of this. Sh- should we cut it here for now? I think so, um, yeah. Uh, well, let's, let's ask him if he can recover any of his audio. Let's not do it just yet. Yeah. recording until we hear from him. <clears throat> okay. You know, I- I'm kind of, like, surprised that it took this long for something like this to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I-, I, like, I knew that it was only a matter of time till someone, like, has a mishap like this. It was gonna, and I thought it was gonna be me for a long time. I was like, there's, there's gonna be definitely one day where, like, I'm gonna lose power in the middle of um, a podcast. That happened once. Uh, I came close to losing power. 
the lights were flickering in one episode. And I thought, I was like, oh shit, I'm about to lose all my audio and this is going to be bad. Yeah, we've gone uh, over let's see. 30 episodes without that happening, so that's pretty lucky, I guess. That's good. Yeah. That's a miracle. Yeah. Well, it's time to pay the piper. <laughs> well, I guess we won't do the zippling part yet. Zippling. You're back! Oh, hello. Oh, hey. you're back. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, David's back. Uh-oh, this could be bad. And, um, the, the, uh, bleh. Can we cut that? Um. No. Please. I want to sound like an articulate I, person. <laughs> I will, I will. Thank you. <laughs> um, so. Goodbye, everyone. Oh, my computer crashed. We're good. <laughs> Wait, what? What? No, my computer's fine. My computer's oh. fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't joke about that. <laughs> I wasn't joking. It was that, like, my computer, like, went briefly into, oh, you're not using me sleep mode. And I was like, oh, fuck, what happened? <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so let me just go back into wiggling my mouse <laughs> randomly. We're good. It wasn't, it was, yeah, no, I, I was also terrified. Don't worry. We're good. Oh, okay. We're good. <laughs> Shion, take care of the rest. Are you picking up the cat whining? By any chance? No. Okay. No. Okay, because she's squeaking a lot. Not at all. Hold her up to the mic, please. But she just ran across the room. Well, when she comes back. All right. When she goes anyway. to scratch my chair again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good job! 